Good evening and welcome to Drakenheim. This is our weekly Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition live stream campaign with the Dungeon Dudes. My name is Monty Martin, running the campaign as Dungeon Master. And I'm Kelly McLaughlin, playing Sebastian Crow, the half-elf shadow sorcerer. And we're joined today by our good friends. Jill Denitis, playing Veo Senya, the tabaxi gloomstalker ranger rogue. And Joel Gorman, playing Pluto Jackson, the human battle master. <laughs> Thank you for joining us once again. If you're just tuning in for the very first time, Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons & Dragons, including advice for Dungeon Masters and guides for players. Check us out at youtube.com slash Dungeon Dudes. You can also join us on Tuesday nights when we record the campaign live on Twitch. Check us out from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch all the previous episodes of this show on YouTube. You can also find it as a podcast on Apple Podcasts, Google Play, and Spotify. We are still getting through the backlog, but we hope to have the entire series complete and uploaded by the end of 2019. For your listening pleasure. Indeed. Mm. Of course, don't forget to look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find some of your favorites like Yes, 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 um, Our Heroes, as well as uh, any of your favorites of the Dungeon Dudes. Take a look at bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. And finally, an extra awesome shout out to all of the wonderful friends and fans who came up and said hi to us at PAX Unplugged 2019. So good. We just we had a wonderful trip down in Philadelphia. We were so thrilled to be able to get to meet so many of you that watch the show, whether on YouTube or or Drakenheim, it was a real treat. Uh, and absolutely getting to meet uh, and talk to people that watch the show and are like, you've helped me with our game and I got DMing it because of you or I'm a player. It was really like overwhelming and touching. And so thank you so much. I learned that so many people really enjoy using animate objects on gold coins. <laughs> uh, I heard that from so many people and I'm so thrilled that all of you love that idea and are ruining your DMs plans with it. Yeah, so a really huge thank you to those of us that those of you that that came up and said hi to us uh, during the con. It was a real highlight of the whole thing for us. Uh, probably hands down, getting to meet uh, folks that was the best part of PAX Unplugged, and it was a really awesome con. So with that, let's return to the ruins. Drakenheim is no more. Struck by a falling star. The city bathed in eldritch fire on that woeful eve. The tumultuous aftermath brought chaos, families torn asunder, and a kingdom shattered. Fifteen years later, monsters stalked the haunted streets of Drakenheim. Caught amidst rival factions struggling to rule the rubble, three unlikely partners venture forth into the crumbling city in search of riches, renown, and revenge. Welcome to the ruins of Drakenheim. When last we left our heroes, they had made a valiant foray into the depths of Castle Draken, there defeating a monstrous multi-eyed creature guarding the pillar which binds the body and soul of Johann Eisner, the steward of Drakenheim and Veo's adoptive father. Our heroes explored the deepest depths of the castle and returned once again alive. This time with a difficult choice before them. For it seems that there are several different solutions before them. A monstrous creature rests on the throne of Castle Draken. A malevolent will, but only an appendage of an entity far beyond the mortal world. Severing this link alone will not end its threat. And thus our heroes are left with a difficult decision. Do they imbue Johann Eisner with the power of the seals of Drakenheim so that he may contain its threat? Do they seek to place an heir on the throne imbued with the power of the seals of the small council to wrestle 
with this malevolent will for gods know how long? Or do they head through the rift that is slowly opening between the worlds and take on the problem at its source, potentially never returning themselves to this world? Having returned back to the camp outside Eckerman Mill, now a shanty town of palisades, tents, and small fortifications where the forces of Caspia and Westamar, the hooded, the, the, both the Hooded Lanterns, and many more remnants and assembled troops from, the far, from several other noble houses have gathered and arrived over the past several days. And the forces of the Hooded Lanterns and the Caspians, as more of them have arrived in anticipation of the marching armies of Illyria. Reports have come in across the past few days of the approaching forces of the Illyrian army as well that heads towards Drakenheim intent on burning it to the ground, led by the High Paladin of the Silver Order himself at the Order of the Hierarch. And indeed, the reports that you've had so far, Veo, as Lord Commander, indicate that even now, as forces throughout Westamar attempt to assemble to meet this threat, others have defected to the Illyrians, believing that the believing the message and the missive of the Hierarch that the royal family is lost and compromised. Mm. So it seems that the Illyrian that even the Illyrian forces may swell beyond what their initial expectations are. In the meantime, the ruins continue to be a more hostile environment than ever before with the ratlings preying openly on those who dare to walk the streets many of the patrols of the hooded lanterns have even given up on trying to explore the outer reaches of the city there are some inroads that are still possible it seems that some of the gates have not the both temple gate and shepherd's gate have been abandoned the gates hang open the Ratlings don't have much interest in fortifications, instead preferring their underground burrows. And while the streets are empty, for the most part, during the day, during the night, no one will return. It's a mess. <laughs> As <laughs> oops, <laughs> Sebastian has spent days in insanity conferring with this spirit of his mother in the worlds beyond. These reports have come into you, Veo. Paluto, increasing agitation from the Caspians. Talk from Saul Jackson of saying, why don't we just act? We should just get in there, charge forth, take the castle. What's left? Dad, it's not that easy. Dad, I give him like a okay boomer sort of like (laughs) glance like back in my day it's like dad you don't get it like this is different this is different magic we're dealing with okay there's a giant minotaur that sleeps there's a um like the the defenses of the castle are still totally active and there's no way at least after conferring with lucretia and Eric, er, uh, and uh, your and, oh. your, and your mom, Lenneth. And, Lenneth. and and Lenneth, like from the other yeah. worlds, I have serious doubts whether or not he can hold the throne. I do not wish to place a Caspian child in danger, but I don't know if we have other options. Um, Saul Jackson is almost red-faced, having had this repeated conversation several times. And Eldrick turns to him in the midst of the conversation and says, George, George is a strong lad. He's bright, talented, but he's not prepared to match wills with whatever this creature is. Now, As far as storming the castle, with seals in hand and the forces that we have assembled, that might be possible to launch 
an assault, Lord Commander. We could, with a dedicated enough group of, group of people, and the support of myself and River and perhaps one or two other mages from the Academy, we may be able to shield our group long enough to get inside the castle walls, but at that point we'll be fighting for our lives every inch of the way. We'll need a direction, we'll need a destination, we'll need somewhere that we can go to bring people and fortify that area. If I were to come and River were to come, we could potentially make some sort of inroad or fortify some area until we can fight our way through the situation, but we won't have long. You're not just fighting against the creatures that are in there, though. You're fighting against the castle itself. And I doubt for long we'd be able to last by fortifying an area. We can't. uh, At the very least, the single greatest threat to bringing all of us there is simple. The haze and the effects of this sludge are unlike anything we've seen or studied before. It will mean that we will not find rest there. And the erratic magic that is in place around the castle, if it's anything like the erratic magics that are in place around the Academy Tower, it will mean that even magical transportation or teleportation or effects that we could use to quickly get in or out will be risky. I wouldn't want anybody risking their lives more than we've already risked at this point. I think it's up to us to figure out a way. Um, I don't don't think so. Jupiter Jones interjects and says, We're all risking our lives. If we don't do something soon, those (coughs) damn it Illyrians will be here right on our doorstep, and then we'll have to make a decision. And if we hold any further longer, we'll have even more rattlings to cut our way through. We don't have time to make a calculated choice. Now is the time for action, and that's what Caspians are best at. Oddly enough, for once, I'm going to agree with Jupiter Jones, I think. <laughs> Thank you. I'm usually right. <laughs> You're making me regret this already, Definitely. Jupiter. Yeah. Atta boy, Jupiter. <clears throat> I think we're going to need all the help we can get in that castle and there could be more threats. And if we're dealing with that thing on the throne, which we're going to have to one way or another, I am worried based on my initial glance at it, that it might be beyond just the three of us. We might need help. And why would we say no when if we lose Drakenheim, everybody here loses Drakenheim. And everybody who wants to fight should have the right to fight for this city. Elias Drexel chimes in and says, I've made a lot of mistakes in my time as Lord Commander. Things that I regret. But I won't regret going into that castle. I think then we need at least some people to stay behind to with the camp. But whoever wants to volunteer, we can't stop you. If we can kill that thing on the throne, we can cement or at least have a foothold in the castle, giving us an opportunity to take back its power. Whether we put Eric on or uh, George on the throne or not, it at least gives opens up the opportunity. Sebastian's right. It, without killing that thing on the throne, we don't get anywhere. Now, there's still the question of the thing on the throne is an appendage. Well, after we kill the thing on the throne, we need to go through that portal and we need to kill whatever's on the other side. If that's the hand, we need to. We can't just chop off the hand. We need to kill the body. Now, here's something I want to bring up, Pluto. I agree with you, but right now, time is of the essence. We need to act fast. And I think jumping into that portal without a proper understanding of what's going to happen to us is suicide. And as much as I'm willing to (laughs) risk my life for Drakenheim, and do what it takes. 
I think if we're just a tad smarter about this, cutting off the appendage will wound the creature, allowing us to potentially close the rift. I know that my mom told me to go down there and talk to Orcus and uh, sell my soul, and I, I've been thinking about that. I'm going to tell Just, you, it still sounds like a bad idea. It's, it's, it's my mom's wish, and I usually would just be like, all in on that. Moms know best. Like, that's the thing. I don't know if my mom knows best in this case. She wanted me to have power and do great things. And I think the greatest thing I can do is not just give my life away to a devil that has, or demon who has corrupted and controlled. He's, he's kind of responsible for rat Rattenheim. How close are the, uh, the Illyrians? More than days, but less than a month, like more than a week, less than a month. So we have Illyrians surrounding us. We have rats infesting the city. Yeah. And we're going to need to be here. The three of us, we have need a to be here. Giant, flesh monster living on the throne hear me out i think okay you think what yeah <clears throat> i think if we cut off the appendage close the gate it will give the amethyst academy time to research the the gate yeah and maybe we can find a way that y you you said yourself that we would go you would come with me to find mouse i'll come with you to kill that thing once we can control Maybe we can put someone on the, the throne to fight back. Lucretia Matthias speaks finally. She comments, You can still put young George on this throne. The, if he takes the sacrament, his will will be strengthened. For behind his will will be the will of the sacred fire. You have known it is said that from the darkest shadow is born the newest light, the greatest lights. The darkest that. shadows. I did say that. Dwell in the worlds beyond our own. And for untold ages, the sacred fire has held them at bay. But this, this is what has been prophesied. For in this rift, we could spill forth into the darkness and bring a new light to worlds that have never seen it. That new age of heroes could be upon us. George, with the power that we have of the flame in his heart, could match the wills with the beast and soothe even that terrible beast in time. Give the flame the opportunity to spark a new ember. Is George in the room? I'm looking around. <laughs> he is not. George! <laughs> George, get in here. Um, Saul I, replies at that and says, can we, can we really ask the boy to do that? You want I, him on the throne. I think, yeah. Like, I, I mean, as much as I'm worried about his health, like, at the end of the day, if I thought he could take over a castle, he should be able to decide whether or not he wants this responsibility. It's up to him. I can't make this choice for him. Eldrick interjects. I think that is ludicrous. Whatever, Lucretia Matthias, you are wise, but you are also... But some have called you mad. <laughs> Whatever visions you have coming to you, none can say truly for certain what power you might be giving that boy. And you have been remiss to allow any of us a sample of your golden delirium to discern its nature. She gave me a sample. I studied it for a few hours. It's pretty crazy. I I remove Ignatius from its from its holder. This is the power of of the golden delirium. From what we've seen, it is like the opposite of delirium. And I'm wondering if not 
not delirium that needs to go into the heart, but the opposite in order to tame this beast on the throne. Eldrick, I know, I know where you're coming from. And George is young. And putting him on the throne is dangerous. But the three of us will be there to help and advise him. Once we kill the thing on the, on the throne, we can bring George in. He doesn't have to come into danger. Right away. He could come in after, once we've quelled the beast. As far as I'm concerned, putting George on the throne could spell as much doom as putting the Queen of Thieves on the throne. Mm. All right, he didn't like my idea. <laughs> what if What if I went on the throne? What if Pluto went on the throne? I as could, was originally planned in, in place of George. I could take the... Wait. I could take the... The... The flame... I want to stick delirium in my heart. <laughs> Eric speaks up. Says, That might not be necessary yourself, but... Should you... Sit the throne, you would need to wear the steward's badge. The only one who can act with the authority of the king is the steward, but only to a limited extent. That is the law of Drakenheim, and it is engraved within the castle's workings itself. It is the same principle under which Eric, under, under which Johan is insisting on using the power himself. It is a limited set of powers. It only allows you to act as a custodian, nothing more. You would be able to do certain things, but not them all, because you're not a true heir. That would be possible, though. Someone else could sit on the throne as the steward of Drakenheim. They would essentially be taking Johan's place. Lucretia, do you know of any way that we might be able to get Johan out? His idea is to stay in there and... The workings of the castle are beyond me. These, the castle was built by the mages of the academy, not by with holy purpose. You can turn delirium into gold, but you can't remove a man from a pillar. Well, the one person who can is the heir of Draconite. The workings of mortal magic are not so much my concern. I am interested in much more lofty and more spiritual pursuits. To me, the rules of this throne seem arbitrary and unnecessary. The city itself, the notion of this mortal rulership of these kingdoms, is not important next to all of us fulfilling our holy purpose before the sacred fire. I I think that like so I think that owning the throne is actually less important sorry Caspians than the fact that we need somebody on that throne in order to get rid of the rats we need to kill that flesh thing take control of the throne to stop the Illyrian threat and to destroy the ratlings is that... That's my idea. I agree. It, that's... Even if we were to get somebody on the throne, that's still a big piece. The throne will not be safe until we can figure out how to get rid of the rats, how to take the city back. So... So who's going to take the throne is really the... Like, I know that we're going in there, and I um, know that we're going to kill whatever's on that throne. Veo, you currently have the stewards. No, I don't. Sealed. Lord Commanders. Who has the stewards? Eric. Eric. Eric has it, yeah. Can we get Eric onto the throne? He can be the I mean, custodian. As long as it's safe. I wouldn't ask him to sacrifice but that. 
I came here to offer my counsel. I'm sorry, but I didn't come here to give up my life. It's true. We gave him the badge, but he's, he's, he's just our intelligence. He's not, I don't, I'm not, Uh, I'm not going to put anybody on that throne that doesn't want to be on that throne. I'll do it. I, like you said, I was, if it means if, if George isn't ready, I'll hold it as long as I can. What are you? We, we kill the thing on the throne. I won't accept that. You're my son. You're the heir to our house. The future of us lies in you. It's it's the only way to buy us time. Or the rats take over Dragon I'm Dad, this is Or no one sits on the throne. But then how do we get rid of the rats? We have to stop the rat threat and we have to fight back the Illyrians, and we can only do that with the power of the throne. The throne controls the constructs. That gives us the the executioner, the dragon. We'll be able to control all of it, and then we can we can clean out the city and fight the Illyrians. Remember, we, though, only an heir will give you that kind of control. Reminds Elric. Pluto sitting on the throne would be no different than Johan remaining in that pillar. It would not give you complete control over all the constructs of the city. It would allow you to contain it would allow us to contain the threat, potentially wielding some, but n- the full power of the city can only be wielded by a legitimate heir. Now, if we give all the badges to Johan so that he can help us close the gate, can we still then put somebody on the throne to control the constructs? Johan would still be able to do help control the constructs as well. Anyone on that throne will be attuned to the same power that Johan does. It, it, Johan is. It is merely the case that in order to fully utilize all of its power, one must be an heir to the Von Castle line. But then I'm thinking if 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 Johan is willing to stay there long enough to help us close the rift and stay there long enough to help whoever sits on the throne so that maybe they can share the burden and control the construct. So if George were to sit on the throne with the help of Johan, maybe... And and, and then, if he wants, wants to do the delirium... And George could potentially release Johan from his servitude. He's the only one. So giving my father the badges to fight this monster, close the rift, and then put somebody on the throne. A legitimate heir. Then to release my father. And George, with the help of Lucretia Matthias and Johan, could control the city and then release Johan from his... He was ordered by the king and only the king can... That way, if it works, you get your dad back. We get George on the throne, and we save Drakenheim. Eldrick shakes his head. That's a half measure. Again, we... The... Whatever Johan is proposing, it will be time before... We can't can't merely give him the power of the seals and then put anyone on the throne. We can't? We can give him the we can put George on the throne. You you want us to go through the portal. Or no, you want us to This portal, this gateway, whatever this rift is. It isn't, a por- it isn't a true portal from what you've described. There's no opening yet. There's just a tear. Correct? Correct. <sighs> Johan, if from what you've described, from what Johan has said, it sounds like he may be able to hold that tear from opening further. And whether or not an heir or anyone else will be able to close it. That depends on them. Either way, it buys us time to study it, and I'm Indeed. hoping the Amethyst Academy can study it long enough so that 
We can ignore the Queen of Thieves saying that she's the only one who can get us in and out of that place. Mm -hmm. If we can study it, Aldrich. You, me, and River. The risk that you take is that even with Johan, it's possible that with Johan kept in the castle that George could sit the throne and with Johan's support could we may be able to exercise some control but that will mean that any time George attempts to do so there could be some risk to him if you are that may mitigate the risk but we can't eliminate we simply can't eliminate the chance of I, we can't be sure that it would eliminate any chance whatever entity is on the other end has of manipulating or harming George in some way. If we leave the throne empty, what happens to the rats? They consume us? You may need to ask Johan what he can do, what power he might still have. At least we can decide how to proceed with George once we kill that thing on the throne. Indeed. Ju- Jupiter speaks up. Jupiter Jones speaks up. For all this decision making, it's one thing is clear. That thing must be destroyed. We have to kill it. Well, then who's coming with us? El- um, Elias Drexel. He stands up. I will come with you. Jupiter Jones. I will as well. For those of you who are volunteer, know that you may not leave alive. What we ask of you is everything. Eldrick and River uh, stand up and Eldrick says, I will accompany you to Castle Draken. I believe that someone needs to survey the situation. I will act as River and I are willing to act as support but this creature we cannot engage with it directly ourselves don't worry guys I'm Sebastian Crow may have heard of me I'll take care of whatever's on that throne Lucretia Matthias says I cannot fight but I would come with you can you heal? I may ask the flame for what miracles I can provide. We might need a few miracles, so at least you're welcome. If my father is to be used, trapped in the castle. Veo, I'm sorry. I want your guys' promise that we're going to try to get him out afterwards. If we can get someone on the throne or by other means of magic, maybe the Academy can do some research if their spells are the ones binding him in there, maybe somehow, but I don't want to go in just Mm. with the idea of letting him rot away there. Eldrick reaches out to you. Well, if I see it, if I see any way, but I have to be there before I can answer that question. If there is anything that can be done, I will study it and we will find something. Then I will take you to him. Vale, Pluto. What we're doing, what we're setting out to do, this isn't the end. We need to save Drakenheim. But we've all made promises to each other. The three of us are a team. You want to save your father? I'm there with you every step of the way. One of the hooded lanterns interrupts as you come in steps into the room. It's one of the hooded lanterns that guards Queen Lenore. He says, Lenore has asked if she can come to Castle Draken. Wait. For what purpose? She's grown very weak. and She says that she just wants, she, she's asked if she can see it one last time. If she commands it. She is still the queen. I don't think that she's going to like anything that she sees in there. Isn't that her Wait, husband on the She also has laser eyes. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Veo's right. What if... What if... She takes the throne? What if... Mm. She's the key. This monster, this beast is corrupted. Her husband. It's... Yeah. They have a connection that goes beyond anything that we might be able to understand. What if she's the missing piece? I see a coin flip situation happening. And this isn't me saying that it's a bad idea or a good idea. It's just me announcing that it's a coin flip. Them seeing each other. If there's any semblance of humanity within that thing on the throne that is still the queen's husband. Just in case it wasn't clear from my description, just to dispel you of this, this creature is definitely not the king. The king's body is flayed and floating around around this thing. Oh, it's I thought it was like connected to it. Yeah. No, oh. he's like... Then the she's definitely not going to like what she sees in that throne room. Well, then maybe she will want to help us end it. And use her laser eyes. Or use her laser eyes. This still goes to the coin flip. Or seeing it, it and have... witnessing what happens opens her up to similar corruption. She's already infused with delirium. Now again, I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just throwing out throwing out the coin flip. Maybe she can hang with Lucretia for a little bit. They can hang out in the back. Yeah. Her I'd- condition has worsened. She is dependent on the haze and the delirium. Whatever has happened to her. She is a creature of the city now. It might be the only way that we even give her a chance if we don't take her. We might as well just let her die. I mean, again, we said any, if anybody volunteers to come, they can come, and she's volunteering to come. Yeah. So who are we to tell her no? Mm. I understand your concerns, Sebastian. And Veo, I'm sorry if uh, we sounded like we didn't take into account Johan. I hope you know that getting George on the throne the first act is to get Johan out of there. Saul speaks up. Very well. If this is the case, someone must protect protect young George. I would come myself as well, but it seems that no one else is left here to command. Saul, I think you're the best protector for George. Very well. Maybe we can keep you in the the telepathic bond and tell you what we when we've accomplished what we've set out to do. That would be my preference. And I will leave Petra behind to command the forces that I leave here. Petra says, But Lord Commander, I want to come. I want to fight. We need someone to lead the people that are here. You can't let my brother go and me not. Do you want me to leave both of you behind? (laughs) Elias Drexel says, I'm already taking your dad with me. Lord Commander, Make them both stay. Petra, Ansem, if anything happens to both me and your father, we need you to run the forces of the city, and I trust you more than anyone to do so. They seem disappointed, but satisfied with that answer. Very well, Lord Commander. And they salute. All right. Pluto... Um, sorry, Jupiter speaks up. Well, Lord Commander, I'll assemble the Caspians. And how many of yours are you going to bring? I'm going to bring a handful of my best men. Very well. We'll have to ride quickly. Eldrick chimes in. I won't be able to help. We won't all be able to fly. We're going to have to ride through the city as quickly as we possibly can. Oh, Before nightfall. Indeed. Oh, Once we get to those gates, we'll need to use the seals to open the way and get through as quickly as we possibly can. Can I fly? I could do that, yes. I just think it would be really cool to fly over the battlefield blasting people from the sky. I just... I just Got a visual in my head. I think I have one more potion of flying. Certainly. Would you want that? Hey, if you guys need artillery. I'd love to get back on a horse. I can probably run fast on the horse, but 
I will be on, on a horse. You you command the foot troops. You command the infantry. Or the cavalry, sorry. Infantry, cavalry, aerial support. We'll have to go through both the baileys and get to the keep as quickly as possible. Isn't there a giant minotaur, minotaur between us and there? <laughs> yes. What are we going to do about that creature? Well, the good news is it's the rings. Uh, we could make a big giant dragon and fight him. It's bigger than a regular minotaur, and we've killed a lot of those. And there's it's a like lot a humongous. More of us. It's a humongous minotaur. Yeah, but we're gonna have like triple the firepower. I'm uh, I'm concerned that it's gonna Queen. distract us from the main mi- mission. This Objective. is the main mission. Take back Castle Dragon. I think we should command the giant dragon of the to yeah. fight the Minotaur. I think we should try. I think that would be a wise choice. Maybe we, we fly up, the three of us. And try to control that dragon? And get the dragon to fight the Minotaur. Pave the way for the rest of the group. And we'll stand by outside the gates. So that all three of us need to fly. Okay. Very well. I will. River and I will place the spells upon you as we did before. You will fly up and attempt to command the bronze dragon. No more running from that Drive dragon. Drive it against the, the... There are other minotaurs as well on the walls. It seems to ignore them. But if you can command it, if you can control it to destroy those defenders and that massive creature... That will give you guys the opening for your attack yep. against the walls of Castle Draken. Once you guys are in, we're going into the throne room. You can meet us there. Very well. Do we still need the mercenaries here to protect the camps? We, Elias Drexel says, we have troops between the Caspians, but if those Illyrians are still coming, we've, this is our last chance to hire them. I say we hire them. All right. We have about... How much do they cost again? We have several hundred a day. We have a lot of... 7,000, Okay. I can make That'll that get them through to the end of the month. About seven thousand five hundred. Seven thousand five hundred. What about the? Um, is that all the delirium? Because we we might have collected some more. Oh, we definitely have more. We have at least once we secure more of the delirium in the castle, the academy will gladly pay for it, which can fund your mercenary pursuits if you wish. There we go again. Take the castle. Oh. Keep the mercenaries. Should we? It's like a big Should we buy things then before we go to the castle? Big, Is there big anything else that you need from the academy before you go? I mean, if we don't have to give the money. You know what? I'll take that other immovable rod. Who knows? Certainly. Can How I much is it? How much is it? 500. How much? 500. Can I borrow 50 bucks? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're called bucks in What do you want to buy? Because they have a picture of a uh, deer. On them. So are we giving the money now or is are the the we're gonna finance it after with the delirium from we, there? You'll need a cash payment up front to bring them here. Mm, okay, fine. You can how much up front do you need? Five thousand. Okay, cool, cool, cool. <laughs> we'll send this along with the remainder of the treasury that we have. And that will secure a few mercenaries for now. How many potions can we buy with two thousand three hundred gold? What do you need? Um, health well, potions. Um, we need, we need maybe even stuff resources for the troops. Yeah. Can we get a hero's feast for everybody marching on that castle? Is that something we can summon up? Does yep, anybody? Yeah. Can we pay for somebody to cast that spell for us? Um. Yes. We can do that. We can arrange that. Okay. How much does that cost? A thousand. Cool. A thousand for a hero's feast. We still have a thousand left. <laughs> um, health potions. Yeah, health potions would be great. Slash, Nate, do you guys have invisibility or no? You can buy potions of superior healing that to heal 40 hit points for 500 each. Not two of those? Yeah. Okay. Do you want to hold on to them? And if one of us needs them, you can... Zoom I over. already have two from the Beholder battle that I didn't drink, so... Pluto, how many do you have? Uh, do you have one superior? I have uh, three superior. Oh, Paul, well, I'm going to take both of those then. And cool. one greater. Um, okay, I think we're... Finally. Finally spent all my money. <laughs> you will have my spell casting. Okay. 
should you require it while we are there. Thank you. That means a lot. And you're acting very, you're very brave for coming with and us. And Rivers as well. She's also very brave. <laughs> and Lucretia says, We do not charge as the mages of the academy do. But when a miracle is needed, I will pray for you. Thank you. That's all we can ask for. <clears throat> okay. Um, what about spells? Spell storing? I already have all mine full. I, do you guys want any of my spells? Or do you want other spells? I, I'm putting two of my own so that I can cast two more fifth level. I'm basically giving myself two more fifth level spell slots. What about... Um, do you want a bunch of shields? Shield's pretty good. Um, yeah. Do what you want, Pluto. What about find familiar? Why? Because I can have advantage on all of my attacks. Okay. <laughs> no, you? that it, it's, it wouldn't be advantage on all of them. It helps you once. Oh yeah, once. On one attack. Okay. What about? Oh boy. Maybe can I have one more absorb elements? Yep. Two shields. Mm-hmm. And I don't know. If somebody wants to take a fairy fire. Do you want another misty step? Oh, that misty step was pretty fun. Did you use all your spells out of your ring? So two shields, an absorb elements, and a misty step. Okay. Nice. Write them down. Boom. I still have all mine from before I have. Is there that. anything else you all would like to prepare before you set out? You must gather your party before you venture forth. <laughs> you may not be able to return to this point. Uh, <laughs> I address I, all my hood and lan- hooded lanterns as I go and I say, I may not survive this battle, but shall it be known as my legacy that the hooded lanterns were full in belly during my... <laughs> Rain here as Lord Commander. Hooray for cookies! <laughs> May you have many cookies in celebration, regardless of what happens. Do good jobs. Even in death. Get snacks. Have... Is this seriously I, how, we're, I, how we're leaving? I turn to Petra and Ansem and say, if they don't get good snacks, I'm going to come back and haunt you if I don't survive. <laughs> yes, Lord Commander. Thank you. Let it be known that our final speech before we set out to our death is about cookies. <laughs> What um, could be more important than cookie, Sebastian? Saul. Maybe tuna. Dad. Maybe tuna. Um, we're going to go in there, and I'm going to do what you've taught me to do best, and that's murder it. <laughs> I haven't met a monster that I haven't killed that hasn't killed me yet, and I ain't scared of this thing, and when I'm done killing it, we're going to get George on that throne. And we're going to do that for for Caspia, for Drakenheim, and to fight back against the Illyrians. Bluto, I have to tell you, I've lived a long time. At 90 years old. <laughs> you look great. You know, you're not my firstborn son. I've had several sons before you, and they've all died doing <laughs> foolish things like this. Wait, what? But you're not just a son of Caspia. You're my son. My ninth one. (laughs) And my only surviving one. I don't know if he's like... At 90 years old, I don't know if I'll be able to have another son. So I know... He'd probably be okay. I know that all my faith and our family and the spirits of your brothers that you never met fight alongside you. Thank you, Father. I won't let you down, because I really can't. You're a son of Caspia, and you're my son. I and will I'm c- proud of you. Oh. Give me a hug. <laughs> Ooh, Love you, boy! Was- and it hurts. It hurts a lot. He's still so strong. <laughs> that was, that was kind of nice, right? That was, was kind of... Look, I just want you to... Saul, can I have a hug, too? <laughs> sure. Just on his heart. <laughs> um, Saul, can you do me a favor? Uh, I pull out my old goggles and I toss them to him. Give those to my brother in case I don't come back. I will. 
And Tobias Crow sees you off again as well, Sebastian, as you all Probably muster. I could have given it to him. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I was going to. You know what, Saul? I'll ju- you, know, uh, you have to ask as, for them. As I do that, I'll back up to Saul. I'm like, actually, my dad's right over there. I didn't think I was going to see him again. Can I, I'll, ju- I'll just give them to him, Saul. It's cool. <laughs> like, it's just might as well keep it in the family. Like, he's going to see him <laughs> yeah, before you yeah. do. <laughs> and so I go over to Tobias, and it's kind of awkward because we've already said bye, like, twice now, where I thought I was going to go off and die. And I'm like... All right, this time, Dad. Stop going. jinxing it. Just, going. You're going to be fine. We're going to go kill Boy. Them. I already thought I'd never see you again years ago. <laughs> oh, okay. okay. Years ago when you left, I thought I'd never see you again. And I started over again. And then you came back into my life. And every time you went out, I thought I'd never see you again. But time and time again, you keep coming back. You just can't get rid of me. Boy, Got came back. <laughs> people who in Emberwood Village used to say you were a curse. A bloody persistent one, if you ask me. Thanks, And Dad. if you are a curse, boy, you're one old bear. I love you. I love you too, Dad. And as we're walking out, I'm like, stay fresh, cheese bags! Bye! <laughs> The hooded lanterns and the Caspians <laughs> assemble what horses remain. <laughs> Between the soldiers, there's really only about two dozen horses. There's not many that can come that will be able to come on this mission. Whoever can. And again, it's volunteers only. So a few of the bravest hooded lanterns and a few of the bravest Caspians have all volunteered, led by Elias Drexel and Jupiter Jones, along with Eldrick and River who conjure up their phantom steeds. Um, cool. And Eldrick says, did I heat you that one? No. He can pull out a horse from his pocket. So. I do. I have a, I have a horse. <laughs> I, have, I have a horse up my sleeves. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to pull that one out? Uh, no, we're flying. We're flying. <laughs> oh, right. Right. This well, would have been the prime moment. But so yeah, comes. Eldrick and River mount upon spectral phantom steeds. <laughs> And the rest of the, the, the group um, mount up. And Lucretia's coming with us. And how are we bringing Queen Lenore? Um, they have brought up a horse for her, and she'll be riding with one of the Hooded Lanterns. It's a rough ride, but she has agreed to bear it. She said um, riding lessons. She'll be fine. Mm-hmm. I, I actually, I go up to the queen as we're setting out and I say, Queen Lenore? Yes. Before we go in there, I just want to say I'm, I'm sorry that we couldn't have done more for you. And I'm just sorry at the way that you've had to see your city. And hopefully we can fix that. I'm fading. My city is a new kind of beautiful. Mm. I've beautiful and terrible. Sebastian, I've heard things. My daughter's going to be there when we go to Castle Draken, isn't she? She's not the same daughter that you once had. This is not the same city that I once lived in beautiful and terrible how time twists everything I'm also sorry for anything that might happen involving your daughter and I walk away <laughs> did we heroes feast oh yeah are we heroes feasting am I just eating on the out? way out yep <laughs> um, alrighty um, what so do you guys do? are going to have a heroes feast We get with that? Yeah, so you get 2d10 bonus hit points. 20. 20. 20. 20. 20. Uh, fortunately, it's going to be 12. Oh. Oh. However, in addition, Lucretia Matthias is going to cast aid on the three of you using a fifth level spell slot. So that is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25 points increased to your maximum hit points. Oh my god. Total? The total or plus maximum 25 hit. No, it's plus. a 37 point increase because Aid and Heroes Feast stack. Okay. 
Okay. Oh, Smash, baby. Smash, Smash. Thanks, Lucretia. Ooh. Guys, feeling good. Feeling like we might have a chance. That uh, Heroes Feast also gives us um, poison resistance. And uh, I have one last thing that I'm going to invoke before we go. And she sits down in front of the forces and she begins to pray over one of the golden pieces of delirium. She takes it in front of her and she crushes it in her hands. <laughs> and as it crumbles, a plume of fire emerges in front of her from which forms into a humanoid form from which wings of fire stretch out and it draws forth a pair of flaming swords the angelic figure a woman ten feet tall clad in burning armor with skin of bronze and hair in wisps of flame and Lucretia says you look upon the angel Makeda Guys, this is rad. Hello, Makeda. Yeah. Makeda <clears throat> speaks. And she speaks a language that... Pluto, you've studied Celestial. She's speaking Celestial, but when she speaks it, you hear the word yeah it, it 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 almost rings out but you understand perfectly what she says my brain as makeda speaks lucretia matthias for what purpose have you called me from the flame and lucretia matthias says makeda I bid you protect these three with every fiber of your being. Thank you. Thank you, Makeda. For your service. I'm humbled by Makeda. Oh, what? Cool. Is she going to be flying with us? Yep. Cool. Uh, Guys, I I feel way better about this situation. (laughs) I uh oh, all right. <laughs> I think we I think we might have a chance. We've we have a chance to save Drakenheim. And if I'm not leaving anything at home where I'm putting it all out there. We're going to kill that thing. Whatever it takes. I forgot to tell someone to take care of my pigeons. <laughs> <laughs> you have this thought as we're flying? It's like, oh no. <laughs> Makeda is mental? one of few words as she oh, flies God. alongside you towards the castle. Below, you can see the column of the advancing soldiers led by Eldrick as um, y- the burning trail of the Eldrick, sh- uh, of the arcane horses illuminates them in the city streets below as they charge through the broken down gates of Temple Gate and race through the city streets as you fly overhead. They make their way. The hooded lanterns fire a a hail of arrows as a few rattlings attack them in the streets, but they make their way through and continue their way towards the castle, following closely as you fly overhead towards them. You come upon... Castle Draken, high perched over the city, the spires stabbing the cloudy skies like spear tips, the darkening clouds overhead threatening a thunderstorm. As you ring out, as you fly out over the castle walls, there is a roar as the bronze dragon awakens from the tower and begins to fly towards you. <clears throat> Information. Roll up my sleeves. In formation, we fly. I'm like in the center, fully doing an Iron Man pose, flying straight at the bronze dragon. 
So you're going right for it. So you go right for the high tower, the the, the dragon tower. As it fl- yeah. as it like swoops down towards us, I'm swooping up towards it. Hopefully, you guys are like on. I'm the right side. beside I you. And I cast, um, what was it? Minor illusion to like booming a voice that says, "In the name of the king." Hopefully, you can hear me at this point. You guys ready? In the name of the king, I, Veo, send you the Lord Commander. Oh, command you. <laughs> ah, I forget what I have to say. Sorry, hold on. Oh. In the name of the king, I, Lord Commander, Veo, send you, command you. Okay. Dragon. I, Pluto Jackson. So the Jackson. range of the actual spell to dominate them is 60 feet. So we're not you'll that need close to roll for initiative. Oh, okay. we're, oh. Yeah. <laughs> we're cool, getting cool. close. Cool, 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 cool. My, cool. my crossbow is like, <laughs> bing, 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 bing. And I'm like, oh, guys, danger's coming. Oh, sick. I love initiative. Wait, do you have advantage on initiative? Yeah. I'm the only one who doesn't. <laughs> it's my okay. bing, 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 crossbow. So you, you f- fly full bore over Castle Draken. The dragon leaps off the tower and crash comes crashing towards you through the airs, uh, through the air as lightning cracks down around it. As always, Castle Draken will get to act on initiative count 20. Um, what do you got for initiative? 15. 15 for Sebastian. 25. 25 for Veo. Uh, 17 for Paluto. Okay. So you actually all get to act before our minas are on. <laughs> Uh, gets to go. So let's see if it's enough to control this creature. <laughs> Where's my mic? Okay, there. Okay. <laughs> you can see. <laughs> Helmet's on. As we're flying towards it, I turn to you guys and I go, guys, just remember, what's the worst that could happen? <gasps> it's literally been the only thing I could think of. <sighs> okay. This whole time. All right. So how close are we? You are... I'm going to say that you are within 100 feet of Minas Arond in the air. Can we fly dash? Is that a thing? Yeah. Fly dash! Your flying speed is 60 feet because oh. Eldrick has cast fly on you. Perfect. And it's 100 feet away? Yeah. Oh. Okay. I fly forward and I cast the spell. Okay. So you are the first one casting it. Okay. Manazorand, as the spell rings out over Manazorand, the the power of the ring comes towards it. You've got some control over him, but you will need help of the uh, of the other two before you've got him. It's like a last a, a magical lasso, and I'm like, guys, I need some help. Ca- a- Ghostbusters. Next up is Castle Draken, yeah. and a bolt of lightning cracks down and shudders through you, Veo. Make a dexterity saving throw. Oh, oh wait. Evasion? Uh, yeah, that comes after. Um, 24. You save, so you take half damage. And I use evasion. Oh, wait. Evasion and I, take no damage. No okay. damage. All right, you dodge. Like, do a, wait, I, I look at her and I yell, do a barrel roll. <laughs> All right, Paluto. I move forward 40 feet beside Veo, and I just stop in the air beside her. In the name of the king, I, Pluto Jackson, Castellan of, of Drakenheim, command you. Okay, I get a 15 on the saving throw. It's not enough. So you've got uh. two commanded. At this at this stage, he's a, he is effectively paralyzed by the by the two of you, but not commanded yet. You'll need one more control, Sebastian. <laughs> no pressure. Um, Sebastian Crow darts forward right in between Veo and Pluto. What, what's the line? <laughs> <laughs> you're the you're the, I, the Archbishop of in the name of the king. in the name of the king. I, the High Mage of Drakenheim, Sebastian Crow, command you. I didn't get over a 10 for a single one of my savings. Yeah! My staff out on the dice. The, the crackling lightning, a bolt of lightning cracks around Minazorond, filling it 
with arcane power as it is bent to your collective will. What do you want him to do? I say, come here for a second. (laughs) The dragon flies towards you. And I just pat him on the face and be like... The heaving metal... You're good. Just as it moves, it's it makes that sound of wrenching metal. That mm, mm. I say, are you a good dragon? Your good dragon is gonna help Grouse. us kill a minotaur. I know. Can I help can, us kill a minotaur. I know I can fly, but I'm, I'm I want to jump on the dragon's back and grab it <laughs> and be like, attack! And I point down towards the minotaur. Do you guys want on to? Is it I'm sleeping? on its head. <laughs> is it still sleeping? Uh. It was With the seen. bolts of lightning, it is roused, and it it is re- it sees this happening up above. <laughs> the minotaur, yeah. More right. specifically, this creature is a demonic minotaur known as Goristro. Oh. Goristro. Guys, let's go. What was the name of the angel? <clears throat> the the uh, angel, uh, yeah. Makeda. Keda, and I pull Ma- out Makeda. With Makeda, an and I pull out Inga- In- Ignatius. We're gonna go kill a minotaur. And I, and I dive bomb. And I dive bomb on the dragon. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and I'm like surfing on its head, like ready to go. I'm like, let's do okay. this. I'm like, so this is a big sh- open area, so we're not we're not going to worry too much about the minis for for now. Uh, but I do think it is worthwhile. <laughs> yes, the mini. So we're just flying at this. Got the dragon too. Yeah. Minotaur from the sky. Knowing that we got that, we do have the the Minazorand, and we do have the Goristro mini. So you're just gonna <laughs> dive bomb it with, yeah. with the dragon on the dragon, dragon angel and Sebastian Crow is on this guy. I'm on him too. Uh, that's less important. <laughs> <laughs> and we're we're, we're dive bomb. We're lower. we're dive bombing. Like th- this is what a dive bomb looks like. All right, you guys all have a visual now. So I will add, <laughs> I will add Makeda and the Goristro into the initiative order. Guys, where are our minis? <laughs> Who knows? Oh, uh, uh, they're up on the shelf behind oh, you. No. One moment. Get the minis. <laughs> Just hold them as they do. So Makeda goes after Pluto and the Goristro. <laughs> goes a dead last. <laughs> that a boy. He knows his place. Okay. So this massive hulking beast. Um, be aware that in order to continue to control minus Zoran, you all do need to continue to concentrate on the effect. All right. True. Okay. okay. So if your concentration is broken, you may lose control of minus Zoran. Uh oh. Okay, as you bear down That's upon it, Veo, um, the Goristro, um, it steals its feet, digs its heels into the ground, and begins to reach down and pick up a shard of one of those huge crystals of delirium, like mm-hmm. it's going to throw it at, at one of you. Okay. What are you going to do? Um, I am going to take... If I use my hand crossbow, is it considered a magical shot? It is a magic weapon, yes. Okay, so I take my hand crossbow out and I shoot the delirium in <laughs> <Yeah>. his hands. <laughs> okay. I'm like, y'all want to play with fire? We're going to play with fire. <laughs> okay. um, so How close are we to it? Uh, you are about 300. At the start of the round, you're about at least 300 feet in the air. All right. So I, if you want to dive bomb, I'll say that you can double your flying speed. So, Veo, I'll, I would say that if you want to just be in range to hit this thing, because it's like 40 feet tall itself, yeah. you can dive bomb and shoot, shoot yeah. the Shard of Delirium. Yeah, we're doing it as we're coming in. We're like, <laughs> and I'm like holding up my crossbow. Is, is this the same combat, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, and I take, using Crossbow Expert, I'm going to take all my shots on him. Are you shooting this Shard of Delirium? Yeah. Okay. Uh, with So it's magic hitting magic. Okay. That's the idea. Um... And then that is going to be 21 to hit the delirium. That hits. Roll damage. (laughs) 15 damage. The the shard of delirium cracks, but it doesn't shatter. Take my next shot. Okay. Uh, 20 to hit. 
That hits. That is 20 damage. The Shard of Delirium explodes. Yes. <laughs> firing a burst akin to a, a prismatic spray on the area. However, since the Garistro is a fiend, it is affected differently by the Delirium. This is what you see. The Shard of Delirium explodes, sending a, a beams of prismatic energy all echoing out with the colors of magic. And shards of delirium spray like pieces of glass into the frame of the Goristro. As they do, as the mist clears around it, leaving the, the fogging haze, the creature breathes in deeply, and the <laughs> shards of delirium melt into its flesh. Okay. And all of a cool, sudden, cool, 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 cool. it heaves as these tumorous growths form over it and its muscles bulge and it grows in size and the wounds heal over it like it's triggered some sort of hyper regeneration um, <laughs> and pieces of the delirium as they grow into it almost f as they melt onto its flesh it's almost like they're forming armored plates over its body and it breathes out and heaves with this bulging power that it has now been endowed with. Good. This this fight was going to be too easy, <laughs> right? Yeah, we needed to right? level the playing field. <laughs> Take my third shot at it okay. instead. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just so like, oh, I miss completely. And I say, somebody pull this dragon up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. As a result of this, uh, the Garistro is now a legendary creature. Oh, no. <laughs> and it gains legendary actions. I had to try. I had to try. It's okay. It's okay. We and so it spends fight. its first legendary action, and it looks up at you, Veo, and it horks back, and it s opens its mouth, and this beam of arcane energy comes out of its mouth towards you. Make a dexterity saving throw. One. Oh. <laughs> you have evasion, right? Yeah. No. <laughs> he rears Just slams the, rears the, the um, hand full of dice. The golden dragon, like in a in a cool loop to loop <laughs> move, and it like dodges this beam of energy. And I pat its head. Okay. Good job. <laughs> Castle Draken. Um, it gets to act next, and another bolt of lightning sails through the clouds. And it's gonna strike Paluto. Ow! Pluto make a dexterity saving throw. This is my jam. This is what I live for. Uh, eight. <laughs> That's a fail. <laughs> oh, no. You are struck don't. by a bolt of lightning from Castle Draken. You know, it's because of the armor. I'm super and conductive. And you're going to take <laughs> big old <laughs> four. Oh, it's going to no. be. Uh, wow, that was a miserable dice roll. Yay. Oh, uh, fine. That is going to be 19 points of, of electrical damage. And you need to make a constitution saving throw to concentrate on. The dominant monster. Oh. I'm on this thing's back, man. Luckily. Oh yeah, the, don't, uh, don't mess around. Yeah, uh, I get a 19. You're good. Uh, <gasps> okay, Pluto, it is your turn. Um, Makeda, follow me, and I dive bomb at this uh, giant demon thing. Okay, Minotaur. so dive bombing, I'll let you drop. Uh, 120 feet straight down with one movement. How much bigger did it get? Uh, I'm going to say now it's like 60 feet tall. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Is our I'm, army coming? Um, I'm out of range of like, melee still. So like yeah, 60 yeah. plus. So I'm going to just. So you're like 80 feet above. I'm going to throw javelins at it. Okay. So I first I huck javelin numero uno for a 20 to. No, sorry. 18 to hit. It Bounces off oh. its newly enhanced delirium hardened hide. <laughs> uh oh. Whoops. Oh boy. Uh, that time I'm gonna. Oh. Okay, 19 to hit? It would have been a hit before, but now it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just throwing. Uh oh. <laughs> Makeda, go! Kill it! <laughs> 
<laughs> Anything else, Pluto? Um, I'm. I try not to. <laughs> I put my helmet down. It fires a beam of energy at you. Make a dexterity saving throw. You get out of here. From its mouth. Boop. Charges get its laser. Out of oh, here. I get a 23. <laughs> With your dexterity or, saving throw? Sorry, 22. Throw? I got a 19 plus 3. Okay, so you still have take half damage. And I throw my shield up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I the shield of I, I I deflect it off into like a pillar beside like, us, Legend of Zelda style, like from Breath of the Wild, like this beam of um of the the beam oh, of like, magical yeah. energy comes up and you just deflect it right out of the way, sending it to the side. And it crashes into one of the towers. There's a small explosion. Stop. So I I, I yeah I throw my shield and I just I kind of yeah. just maneuver it into a yeah the beam of octarine That's energy. So scary. <laughs> Don't worry, Monty. The one character who has no way of saving themselves fully is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> um, Makeda flies down to meet the creature. Uh, Makeda dive bombs and with uh, her flying speed, um, she uh, uh, she is actually. S- she can dive bomb 180 feet. Uh, so she's still not quite in range to hit it either. Um, so she is. Um, yeah. So she's still. Go, Makeda, go. Okay. Sebastian, it's your turn. I. Since I still can fly, I actually push off of Makeda uh, with my goggles out and just so that I'm a little bit away from her in case something bad happens here. And I pull out my staff of power and I dive bomb towards it. So I was on the dragon. So did I move with it? Yes. So I move. How close am I now to it? Uh, you are starting your turn 180 feet away. How far can I uh, 180 feet above ground. Yeah. So you're 120 feet o- away from where this creature, where basically the height of the Garistro. I dive bomb. So I'm within 60 feet of it. Okay. And I pull out the staff of power. And I am going to cast... Jumping off of... Yeah. Yeah, the dragon. And I'm going to cast Ray of Enfeeblement on it. Okay. It. Uh, so you have to roll the hit, right? Um, make a ranged spell attack, yes. Yeah. Uh, 24. That is a hit. And then so it makes its saving throws at the end of its turn, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it it deals half damage on strength based attacks, which is almost all of them. Okay, that's the idea. And then I pull I pull up from my dive bomb and kind of okay. like I'm now, hovering there. What is does it require anything? What What do you mean? Oh, it was from my staff of power. Yes, it does. Let's roll that up. Yeah. <laughs> wow, magic search. Yeah, you're excited now. There's what about- potted plant. Potted plant. Oh, here's a good question. <laughs> Thank you, Pluto. That's can I, I concentrate on a spell and on controlling the dragon? Uh, no, you cannot. Does Raven Human require concentration? The- it does, but it yes. Yeah. Do you want to retcon this? Because I reminded you of that once already. I know it's an important thing. We, if we lose some control of the dragon. Uh, Maybe we can <laughs> still kill it. No, no, you're right. Um, oh man, all we of my haven't sp- rolled the wild magic surge yet, but you did roll to hit, so you're kind of committed to this cor- course of action. But okay. I will, uh, I will grant you a mercy. <laughs> what would you like to? Do? Uh, I will grant you a mercy, but you will not get to choose another course of action. I'm sticking with it. Oh, okay. But Go. can I quicken that spell and then use the... Is it a spell when I control... Although, no, I need to concentrate yeah. on it. Yeah. yeah, I'm sticking with it. It's okay. what I said I was going to okay. do. Go for it. Do it, do it. Roll the, Roll your your magic. Let's see what happens. I regret my choices. 48. 48. Do I roll twice or is that only in yeah, Castle Yeah, you track? roll twice. I roll twice. Yeah. It's the unicorn... 21. Uh, 21. Wait, the unicorn is one? Yep. Oh, bring the unicorn back, man. Uh, the other one is creatures have disadvantage on saving throws against the next spell you cast over the next minute. One, two, three, it's the disadvantage. Four, five, six, we got another unicorn. We got no unicorn. Uh, but still disadvantage. All right. 
Charles isn't appearing tonight, but <laughs> Sorry, not appearing in this, in this episode. But as I blast it with rave and feeble mint, it gets hyper weakened. Cool. And the green energy like wraps around it, and I'm focusing on that beam of green energy. But in doing so, I've stopped paying attention to the dragon right behind me. Okay, so <laughs> Minazorand is uh, it's Minazorand's turn. Uh, unfortunately, Minazorand. Uh, uh, the Greastro gets its, le- its last legendary action. It's going to blast you, Sebastian, with its make a dexterity saving throw. You got this, kid. I get a nine. You fail. Ooh. A beam of octarine energy fires out towards you and collides with you, enveloping you wholly. You are going to take a grand total here of... Yeah. I'm, I'm making great choices tonight. Of 30 necrotic damage. Cool. Cool. Uh, make a concentration check for Ray of Enfeeblement now. I think you have Warcaster, don't you? Are you, you might have. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a um, 28. Okay, so the Very spell is well still in done. effect, but you still take 30 points of damage. Minazorand, it's Minazorand's turn, but unfortunately, without three people controlling it, uh, Minazorand is effectively uh, inert, um, and so does nothing. He just stops in the air? Yeah, he just stops in the air. I'm like, ooh! Yeah. Okay, well, I mean... I, I, I turn around, and I'm like, oops. It's fine, he's not attacking us, but he's not doing anything. Magic is hard! Okay, Veo, it's up to you. I then take my crossbow <laughs> out and I continue to fire at this crazy thing. We shall see. 13. Uh, that is a complete miss. It does not even penetrate its regular hide. Oh, uh, 23. Uh, that is a hit. Woo! Wait, did, the, did, did the Goristro go? go? Oh, I forgot! I forgot the Goristro. Oh, yeah. sorry. Okay, I will pause. Wow. That. Well, the uh, reason yeah. I enfeebled him so that he was okay. weak in this. Although now he, I'm still reminding Monty to give us attacks. Yeah. but that's fair. Uh, yeah. We're so the Goristro is going to uh, reach into the earth and pull up a massive rock, and it throws it um, <sighs> at who's cl- who's come the closest. I'm within 60 feet of it. Yeah, it's Makeda, it. how, how oh, yeah, close is Makeda? Uh, Makeda is the closest. Um, mm-hmm. But you guys have all attacked it, so it's going to fire, it's going to hit someone that actually hit him with an attack. It's going to be Sebastian, because he's the, the closest. He's Hello. It. So Sebastian, <laughs> he does have disadvantage on this attack. That's good. Or is it half damage? It's because- half damage. Oh, okay, okay. So uh, he gets a 32 to hit. Uh-huh. I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, wait, what does re- uh, what about that thing? What, what did the wild magic do? Oh yeah, well, the wild magic gave his him disadvantage. disadvantage on his next saving throw, which oh. he's gonna have to make. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's um, good. Okay. So, bunch of damage coming in. Good. Good. So it would have been thirty-eight points of bludgeoning damage, but it's four. Uh, but it's half that, so it's gonna be nineteen uh, bludgeoning damage instead. And you need to make a strength saving throw. A strength saving throw. Yeah, I don't you got like this. that. You got this. Fifteen. You fail. Uh. You are checked in the air. You are f- sent flying twenty feet and knocked prone, which means that because you're knocked prone while you're flying, you fall. How high in the air are you? Uh, Sixty feet above him. So, so you got so above him. So that's one hundred and twenty feet. So you how, now fall. Well, how close are you to me? Do you have a reaction? I have feather fall. As a reaction? Yeah. What's the range out of feather fall? 60 feet. You're within 60 feet. You can use your reaction to do Ooh. that. Yeah. Oh, boy. Okay, so Sebastian, feather falls to the ground and lands safely. Oh, God. <laughs> and you he's see on me the just disappear into the haze. I'm just like, no! <laughs> Veo saved your life. I'm falling, I'm plummeting, and then I fall softly. One of my pigeon, pigeon's feathers, I like okay. toss it out to the air as I cast it. Nice. I keep them so now it is your turn, Veo. That. So okay. y- you had one attack that hit? Yes. Uh, with 19 damage. Okay. And then uh, bonus action. Nope. Okay. And I... Um, that's it. I'm Did just on the dragon. Um, you gotta roll it. Uh-oh. I got a 19. 
you're good, and I failed my saving throw because of the disadvantage to shake off the effect. Actually, wait, what's it's a constitution saving throw? Yes. Uh, I got a 23. <laughs> All right. Okay, so the Raven Feeblin is gone. Great. <laughs> okay. The Grisha uses its legendary action to run over to Sebastian. This no! Is, this is fine. Uh, and Castle Draken goes, and a bolt of lightning hits Veo. Veo! It can try. Okay, make a dexterity saving throw. Uh, 14. Okay. That is no, a failure. We're fine. Yeah, I could take half damage, though. The bolt of lightning crashes out from Castle Draken, and Veo, that is going to be a grand total of 30 points of lightning damage. Like half. Okay. Make a concentr- uh, concentration check for your... Uh, uh, you gotta get a DC 10 concentration check for your control of Minas Arand. Sorry, what? Because you're, contr- you're concentrating on Dominate Monster. And that's plus my proficiency, right? Yeah, 18? you're fine, though. You succeed. 18! Okay. Or you're con. You're con Pluto, it's like, your turn. Oh, I'm concentrating! Um, <laughs> bolts of lightning... <laughs> The screaming Goristro pouring over Sebastian, 60 feet tall. It's poised to just stomp on him. Um, I... How big is he? He's only, what, 60 feet tall? He's basically a gargantuan <laughs> creature now. He's 60 feet tall, like 30 feet... This broad shoulder, 30 feet wide, bulging muscles, delirium energy going through its entire body. I fly right at him, okay. and I'm going to go right for his... Uh, the big old back. I'm going to go nice. right for his back. And just try to chomp into him with Ignatius. And I get out. Yeah. I get a big 28. That is a hit. There we go. Now we're cooking with fire. With golden fire. Um, oh, oh, boy. 22 damage. Nice. And then I want him to... Oh, wait. He's a gargantuan creature. <laughs> I know. I know. So I'm like... Because, yeah, he was huge. Now he's gargantuan. By- by a gargantuan. <laughs> Why is it so big? <laughs> because Veo made delirium explode on it. <laughs> um, it worked with Oscar. I don't know if he's uh, going to absorb it. Um, <laughs> it. It's not carrying anything, is it? No, it's basically naked. Um, it has these big golden van braces on its arms and some, some uh, piercings on its horns. I'm going to use maneuvering attack okay and it's gonna take another eight damage nice and sebastian can use his reaction to run away <laughs> <laughs> he can move half his speed right uh yeah up to half his speed unfortunately provoking. sebastian's prone so he can crawl five feet. but he can no, fly. i can fly i can stand up using 15 feet and then fly 15 feet 15 feet yeah. without provoking opportunity attacks yeah. From so the creature I, that I, I hit. do that because now it's in combat with Pluto, and yeah. I I fly back up and fifteen feet out. into the okay. air. Okay. Out. As I continue my assault on this evil okay. creature, getting a to- oh, I'm gonna use the big old lucky to there turn you go. that into a <laughs> oh, there thirty. We go. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay. For another. Uh, um, 20 damage. Nice. And then, um, one more attack. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. Um, gonna use a 25 to hit for with precision strike for another 8, 16, 25 damage. Wow. And then I want to use... Um, big old uh, maneuvering attack, and I go, Makeda, there's your opening. <laughs> nice. Or uh, no, sorry. Um, uh, what's the other one? I already forget it. The uh, distracting strike. Oh, to give advantage. Okay. And it's gonna take another seven damage. Nice. <sighs> okay. Nice. Uh, the Grisho uses its legendary action to to basically pitch at Pluto with its horns. This is a gore attack. Ah. Getting a 30 to hit. (laughs) Ow. I accept. Thanks. Thanks for that. So that's... uh, 
So Pluto, you're gonna take big old. Wow, that really. Pluto, you take 55 points of piercing damage. Ah! As it just <laughs> takes its horns, and as you dive down into it, it turns around, just takes the horns, and stabs into you. <laughs> the, uh, Pluto, no! I'm, thankfully, because of all the extra hit points, I'm not quite bloodied yet, but it's really close. <laughs> okay. I mean, there is a horn in you. <laughs> so it's you're not Makeda's bloody, turn. but you're bleeding. Makeda, get it! Makeda flies down and attacks the Goristro twice, uh, hitting only once. Have an advantage. Does she have to get the advantage? Oh, yeah, that was the, the advantage hits, and then the second attack doesn't have advantage. Uh, so it hits, too. Woo! So both her attacks hit. Uh, she, her, her swords light up. She slices them down and deals a grand total of 50 points of damage yeah. uh, kind of, to the Goristro. What kind of damage is it? It is radiant damage. Get him, Makeda. Get him. Yeah. As as this flurry of flight and glowing blades cuts into the demonic form of the creature. Um, it uh, It is out of legendary actions because it costs two to move. So it is now going to go to Sebastian. I turn to face the creature and... Uh, hold out my staff and from behind it the shadows of the, its own shadow starts to bubble and mm-hmm. all of a sudden Reaper leaps out attacking it from behind. Okay. Um, so In the booty. I'm, I'm going to do a little a little Reaper attack. Seventeen. That is a miss. Well, he tried. But... Booty's too tall. I then <clears throat> point my staff at him and I say, "What do demons have nightmares about?" And I cast Mental Prison. Okay, okay, here. So it has disadvantage on the saving throw, which cancels out its magic resistance. So I have to make a what kind of saving throw? Intelligence. I have a minus two on this. I hope so. I get a two. <laughs> yeah. I am mentally imprisoned. What happens? So, what do demons have nightmares about? Basically, you you know what? Sw- the things that demons have nightmares about is something that is f- better left unsaid. So, a swirling <laughs> Luffy barrage puppies of and kittens. <laughs> nice uh, things. Stop it. <laughs> a swirling mirage of of fatty. horribleness. <laughs> yeah, sure. You guys can Yeah, it's kittens. All right. It's kittens. As as far as Veo and Pluto are concerned, it's kittens, but whatever This demon gets surrounded by shadowy nightmares and it starts screaming in fear as I hold it in place and my eyes start glowing purple as I'm floating there in the air with my staff and in a booming voice I'm like speaking in eldritch incantations. It takes 5d10 psychic damage immediately. More dice. Oh, you have enough. It can't see or ha- hear anything beyond it, and it's restrained for the spells. Di- spells duration. I'm I'm sticking with this one. It's really good. Not the kittens. <laughs> <laughs> it's surrounded by kittens playing with yarn, and it's <laughs> in a land of cotton candy. <laughs> I I like to imagine that that like. De- demons nightmares aren't like the opposite of like the demons don't have nightmares about nice things they know nice things are dumb like the things that night they know that nice things are nice things that demons have nightmares about if you guys want to think it's kittens great but it's not kittens <laughs> like it's it's just it, not it, it's kittens. Worse. it's worse. Like it's, uh, kittens, it's, it's 33 kittens. damage <laughs> i think i think you know what demons probably have nightmares about having to do their taxes yeah <laughs> Menial tasks. <laughs> Menial tasks, retail jobs. You have to really, iron your loincloth. No! I really feel like the, the epicness of this spell is like <laughs> you have to loss uh, on him doing menial tasks and taxes. But it's 33 damage. With kittens. Okay. That leaves it bloodied. Yay! Ooh, now how do we hurt? I don't know if it's gonna escape the mental person. <laughs> Uh, so it's restrained too. Yeah, it is restrained. So all attacks against it have advantage. Mm. 
Um, and no one is in range of it. It can't see anybody around it because of the illusion. Woo! Uh, so it can't see anybody. So it th- and it is restrained. It thrashes and rages and screams out in horror. That's all it does. <laughs> um, and it doesn't get any saving throws to get out of it now. Okay, that's it. And I'm just hovering a bunch of above the battlefield, godlike. Yep. With my glowing purple eyes. So are we, are we uh, still hurting it, though? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool, cool. Kill it. Mm-hmm. Kill it dead. It's an advantage, Yeah, right? Veo, it's your turn. Yeah, because it can't see anything beyond the illusion, and it is restrained. All your attacks against it have advantage. All right. Um, I still use my crossbow, and... Wow. That was two fours. <laughs> You're sh- <laughs> literally shooting something that is the... <laughs> the size of the broad side of a barn. Yep. And, and you hit it directly. It's not- you, you hit it directly. The arrows just don't go through it. There was a high wind. <laughs> <laughs> it came in on an angle. All right. Second shot. There we go. Two. It's a double crit. <laughs> oh, double crit. Double crit. That doesn't mean anything. It doesn't mean anything. Everything. It means something to us. It Amazing. Means everything. All right. Ah. So you get your sneak dice on this. So the sneak attack is maximized. How many is your sneak dice now? It's 46. Three. Let me just double check. No, you're level 12. It should be four. So it's... Four. Four D6. What's your bonus to the damage roll? Uh, Plus 14. So this is going to be 38 plus whatever you roll on the dice. There you go. Do you have any way of moving it? Um, no, it's too big. <laughs> it's too freaking big. Oh, <laughs> Everything is large or smaller. <laughs> so you just did a grand total of... Wreck it. 61 points. Yeah! <laughs> On a crossbow. <laughs> nice. It cries out in pain, although the pain of its wounds is only secondary to having to find out exactly... The, the pain of the illusion where now it's trying to find all of its res- its gas receipts. Oh, oh. It, ah, ah, worst. <laughs> okay, I, mean, I forgot to claim my deductions for my <laughs> business trip. <laughs> <laughs> Where's January to March? Where's January to March? I still need my T4As. <laughs> you're the only one who can speak its language, so you're hearing all this, and the rest of us like, just think it's That screaming. must be really bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it is, I guess. <laughs> uh, my last attack uh, using crossbow expert. Yep. Um, yeah, 21. That's a hit. Nice. Uh, 20 damage. Nice. All righty. Pluto, bring this thing home. Um, I just start uh, seeing it just standing there. Um, I just start wailing on it. Um my opening Get it, given Pluto. to me. Oh, that was brutal. Uh, 15 damage. Um, uh, a 20 hits, right? Yep. Uh, four, four, five, six. 15 damage again. Ooh. Come on, Pluto. Here we go. Uh, and then 21 damage. Nice. Restrained within its mental prison, Pluto and Makeda cut it to pieces, the two of them flying around it with their radiant blades digging deep into its flesh, and the beast collapses dead. I float softly to the ground. Can you get the dragon going again? (laughs) Please and thank you. (laughs) I'm just on the dragon in the air still, like, hey. It's basically a dragon. What happened to the dragon? Like We're going to take our break right there. Uh, See you in a bit. And we are back from our break. Want to give a big shout out, as always, to Tabletop Audio for providing all of our ambient music. Uh, I hope it's epic in the fights in the sky and in Drakenheim. Check it out, tabletopaudio.com. It's all free and it's all there for you. Of course, don't forget to take a look at the links below for our Teespring store where you can find all of your favorite Dungeon Dudes and Drakenheim t-shirts, or you can check out the link bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. If you're enjoying the stream and you want to support our work, check us out on Patreon. You can find out how by following the links below or at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore 
dudes. And also, we have a phenomenal Discord community exclusive for our patrons. So you can come and join us on Discord and chat with us about all nerdy things, all things Drakenheim, all things D&D, and anything else you want. So check it out. With that, let's return to the ruins. As the massive form of the mutated Goristro collapses onto the ground of the courtyard before the main castle doors to the ca- the keep of Castle Draken, the thundering hooves of the vanguard forces arrive beside you. Eldric, River, Jupiter Jones, Elias Drexel, Lucretia Matthias. They have all come. And Lenore. And Queen Lenore have all come. As Queen Lenore is brought down from her horse by one of the hooded lanterns, she falls to her knees and audibly begins to weep, pulling at her mask till she can't cl- to, that she can't pull her tears away. She says, The castle... I run up to her and I say, My lady, you're home, but it's not your home. Just remember that as you go through. She breathes in. It still feels like home, but in a new way. This, my gardens. And she stares off into the distance. I drink a potion of superior healing. Are you hurt? Says Lucretia Matthias. As I'm about to drink it, I'm like, yes. Should I not drink this? She speaks a few words and she casts prayer of healing over the course of a minute. Um, and she's going to use a higher level uh, spell slot for this one for you all. And. Um, Can I help? Yeah, uh, so that's going to be five. Any more? Uh, Lucretia casts the spell. So each of you regain 25 hit points. (sighs) Feels great. I see Makeda has already proven her value. Yeah, she definitely helped out. Very much needed fighting this thing. It grows in strength from the delirium. Eldrick speaks. We should get inside quickly. I will create a protective barrier that we can, for for those of us that are staying behind. Can some of the Caspians and Hooded Lanterns stay with us? Yes. Yes. (sighs) Should the Hooded Lanterns stay with them? And we'll take all the Caspians with us? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, I mean, Jupiter's kind of in charge, right? I want to fight this thing. Let's kill it. Okay. As think- do I, says Elias Rexel. Oh, I mean, yeah, you can come with us. <laughs> boop, boop. There's a pair of hooded lanterns. Oops. <clears throat> three hooded lanterns, three Caspians. And three of each stay behind with River and Elric. Okay. And Lucretia. <clears throat> As you come in the main gates of Castle Draken, look down upon the Great Hall. Eldrick begins forming his own tiny hut. (laughs) I will create this to protect us. We will stay here in the main hall. You are all heading up to the throne room then. Yes. Yes. Elias Drexel speaks up. Lord Commander, what's our plan of attack? You've scouted through this area. 
Are there many more creatures wandering the halls here? Do we need to be on our guard? I think we need to be on our guard for rats, just in case they've made their way to the castle. I think that there are ground attacks and there are levels above that we can attack from as well. I think it's best for the rangers to be up top. Should also be aware that there uh, may be a large armored minotaur with a flaming sword roaming the castle still. Just walking around. That is the prince. Um, but there is a balcony above the throne room, so those of you who right. are ranged attackers might be better suited to take that balcony and lay down a blanket of fire. Vale, where do you want to be? I think above is best. I think I'll go above, too. <laughs> I'll stand beside it. <laughs> you and You'll Jupiter. lead the charge on below? Yeah. You and Jupiter? Um, uh, very I'm, well. We're going to run at it. What weapons does Elias have? Is it melee Elias or ranged? Elias is completely capable in both. In both. I turn to Elias and I say, Elias, ranged, or do you want to get in its face? I'd like to get up, up close and personal, but this thing sounds horrific. I think if, if it's all the same to you, Lord Commander... I'll come in from the top, survey the situation, and if they need support down there, I'm more than happy to go down. All right. You're a perfect middle man. Actually, I think we should all stay up top to start and kind of work our way down because it it definitely expressed that it has an aura of death that comes out of it. I mean, you are quite natural at jumping off balconies. Like, I don't want to just go in and just (laughs) explode. (laughs) Like, I would rather... Also survey. Elias, you actually, that was really smart of you. Jupiter, we're going to go upstairs first. <laughs> and we're just going to take a quick peek, peekaboo. And then there. All right. Okay, so we all go in on the balcony. Yep. We lay down some initial fire. You have some javelins. Yeah. And we, we just, we figure out the best way to approach. I'm also worried that it might have creatures that it can summon. Potentially. I can handle summon creatures pretty yep. well. I hope. (laughs) I have faith in you. Shall we, then? The last march of Drakenforce? For now. I never thought I'd be setting foot in this place again. It seemed like an impossible dream. I can't believe you brought us this far, Lord Commander. But the three of you... The three of you changed in a few short months what I thought we'd be fighting for years together. I'm sorry that I never trusted you fully and completely from the beginning, but you're brave souls, and I'm glad to fight and, if need be, die beside you. Agreed. I think these last few months have changed all of us, and that we've come this far is amazing, but just remember that it may have been a dream to get in this castle, but it may turn into a nightmare. Keep your wits about you, and hopefully we can all get out of this alive. Certainly. Is there any other support that I can offer you? Can you, uh... Can you turn some visible? Give, give me some mage armor? Certainly. He casts mage armor on you. Now I have, like, shimmering purple armor over my body. Ooh. It's, like, see-through. Magic armor. <clears throat> what does that do? That puts my armor up. Uh, Lucretia Matthias says... When you are ready, I will speak a blessing for you. But you will need to go quickly, for its magic will not last long. Hmm. Are you coming up to the doors outside upstairs, or are you staying down here? I will come up when you've destroyed this creature. Okay. Um. If you are hurt, Makeda will follow you. Eldrick, can you... Oh, hold on. Pass without a trace. It would be have to be on the person that's casting, right? Uh, Eldrick cannot cast pass without a trace. Yeah. Guys, do you want to be quiet as we go up? I mean. Or do you think just get in and in its face is going to be best? I think we just. We're going to Pluto this? 
Pluto? Are we going to Pluto this? If if we just go upstairs, we can just kind of take a look. Poke our heads in. I think. Okay. Okay. What okay. do you, what do you want to do? No, I thought okay. we're going in upstairs. I just wonder: Are we trying to sneak in upstairs? <sighs> you're you're the one who's the expert at sneaking. I can wait outside <laughs> until you guys call me in. All right. I say we make our way upstairs outside the doors. See if we can clear the path if there's anything in our way, and then we'll go in from there. If we can open the door crack, I can send Crowley in just to take a quick look. Let's see what's in there. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Are you ready? Okay. I turn to my men. Lord Commander, we're at your side. Prepare yourselves for the most disgusting thing you've ever seen. Like, hopefully you didn't have too much of a hero's feast because it's going to come up. Uh, like I should be quite specific uh, for the with regards to the hero's feast. I just want to double check here how many people can actually be affected by it. Only 12 creatures can partake in the Hero's Feast. One, two, three. We have 11 in have here. 11? Okay. Is that including, like, is, is Jupiter there and Jupiter. Saul? Saul's back at okay. camps. He wouldn't uh, have gotten the feast. Elias is here. Jupiter's here. Three each. Us three. And that's it. Oh, okay. and uh, Angel. Oh. And Angel. Makeda? Okay. Does she get the feast? She doesn't. She didn't She wouldn't eat. get okay. the feast. Is um, Lucretia with us, or is she... She's not, she... She's staying behind? She's staying And the behind. queen is staying behind, because yes. she's not going to fight? Okay. Yep. Although we're coming in upstairs, right? Yeah. Sorry. Did you, and did you guys want to take a short rest before you go in? Um, I mean, I personally don't need to. It gives me quite a few things back. Okay, well, at we'll least do it. it gives me... Um, you can spend any hit dice if you've taken damage. Okay. Yeah, let's take a short rest before we barge in there. Okay. okay. I'm good. So I guess you planned who was going to s- come in in advance, and that those are the ones that got the hero's feast. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, I'm back up to full. How about you, Pluto? I'm ready. I'm full. I'm ready to go. Okay. Full right. tilt. <clears throat> Alrighty. So are you guys going in through the balcony? We're going in through the balcony on the top level. Okay. And we're going to first open the door a crack and I'm going to send Crowley through. Okay. You head up the stairs, the main stairs of Castle Draken, to the topmost level where the royal apartments are. This is where you found the statue of another demon. You open up the door a crack, sending Crowley squeaking through into the throne room covered in tendrils of flesh the throne room is a mockery of the artistry it once was it's it's gilded pillars and painted ceilings now a scene of desecration where pieces of delirium have been chained up in the floors wrapped around from this malignant tumor of a massive creature that is suspended in between the floor and the ceiling so the actual creature itself is this massive bloated mass of flesh that dangles some uh roughly about 10 feet off the floor like the there's this mass of bile that pools underneath it and the chains holding it in place that almost seem like they're they might be connected to a connected to it but it's clear now from looking at it clearly that it it is floating in the air although there are these tendrils that reach up and almost and the chains that almost entirely hold it in place where it is the there is this semblance of a visage bloated eyes and a yawning maw the whole thing is just a wet sack of flesh chains and bile Around it are several gibbering, gibbering, demonic forms. Creatures that have been twisted beyond all semblance of rolling flaps of flesh 
and limbs and mouths and eyes roiling over each other almost like a human form has been liquefied several of them trundle around the balcony others lumber in the gallery below how many are on the balcony Guess we can't be surprised that we left them alone for days and they just come out of that portal. Yeah, there's perhaps, say, almost 10 up here, maybe 10 more down below. Um, after seeing all of this, I bring Crowley back. He lands on my shoulder. All right, guys. We've got ten up top and a whole swarm of them down at the bottom. You guys ready to clear out some demons? Pluto, it's what you do best. (laughs) This is is what I was built for. Say we clear out the top and then go for the bottom. Absolutely. Okay. Who's going in first? So, Veo, uh, the me? hooded the hooded lanterns will act after your initiative. Okay. Pluto, the Caspians will act after your initiative, and Sebastian Makedo will act after your initiative. And for the purposes of simplicity, each of you will control your respective group. Okay. 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 Roll for initiative. Ooh. Come on, dice. Come on, dream. Huh. Yes. Nice. Sebastian? 20. 20 for, for Sebastian? 23 for me. 23 for Veo? Uh, 18. Okay. Well, I guess that decides who's going Did in Lucretia first. Did Lucretia bless us? Yes, you are blessed. Oh. And that's on attacks and... So this creature actually goes last, even though it rolled a natural 20 on its initiative. But Pluto only got 18. I got a 18. I know, it has a minus four dex penalty. Oh! Oh, Oh, that's good to know, guys. That's good to know. (laughs) I mean, we know that it sucks at dex. That's handy for me to know. Oh, okay. All right, so you've got the upper floor over there and the lower floor over there. So effectively, um, so that you know for the, the battle map, the the four pillars the furthest away from the throne correspond to the corners of the balcony. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yes. Absolutely. Yep. For our yep. battle cam, will we be able to see? We're just going to be able to see the throne floor? room itself. Yeah. That's okay. okay. Maybe we can put them up here or something. Yeah, it... it I tried to balance it, but it's a little too heavy to stack it on top. Or, like, we can just put our miniatures. Yeah. Along the wall. Uh, well, because the positioning might be important, so I would actually... That's why I set it out to okay. use the real thing. Unless... Okay. No, never mind. Okay. Right. Okay. Okay. So, from the moment you open the doors... <laughs> All right. We will be in an initiative order. So, Veo, you are the first to act. Okay. We open the doors... There's a dude right there. And mm. I just, yeah, as soon as I see and them. And all of you are going from the top floor, correct? Yeah. Yes. Okay. I know that we're down here right now, but we're all. Okay. I imagine two people open the doors and I'm already standing there with my crossbow ready. And I'm like. It's me and Pluto. Oh, look. And I start we my do the first like, turn. Three, I use two, my dread one. ambusher. <laughs> open the door. And I'm going to start to wail on the first thing I see, um, which is that pink pile of smudge. So I take my first attack. Ten. That is actually a miss. I'm you have thrown blessed. off. You have blessed. Oh yeah, sorry. Hold on. Yeah, you have blessed. So that will make it a hit. <laughs> yeah. 
cool, cool, cool. Okay. So you're a little thrown off, but the blessing of the sacred fire writes your aim and you hit this wretched creature. <laughs> a like beam of light shines on the bolt ah. and it turns. <laughs> 21 damage. With a wet pop, it explodes in a cloud of putrescence. And there's another one there, too, the smaller one, yeah. right? Okay, I take... They're all effectively the same creature. Cool. cool. Yeah. Take another shot. Pew. Oh, yeah, 25 to hit. Also a hit. 20 Bang. damage. Pop. The second shot fires straight through it, leaving behind... Pop um, as it collapses and its innards melt away. I um, I actually look straight across and I see one of the other big fat ones and I aim for that one. Um, fourteen. That is a hit. Uh, nineteen damage. Nice for the big fat one over there. It hits its head, ripping through, pulling out brain matter and gray matter at the backside of it. Oh. Uh, and then I go Please to, the, them back to me. the next furthest one away that, whoop, that I can see uh, across the room. And I take my last shot because for my dread ambusher, I get an extra shot with that. Okay. And Feho clears out the most. Get him, get him. Um... It's like 16. Also a hit. Uh, 16 damage. Incidentally, doesn't destroy it. Leaves it bloodied. Womp womp. Yep. All right. And then I say, have at him, boys. <laughs> okay. The hooded lanterns rush into the room. Elias Drexel uh, rushes forward with his axes to engage those two. He makes two attacks. Yeah. Both of which hits, cutting yeah. down one of them. And the hooded lanterns each fire two attacks. Under Drek with both the Lord Commander and Elias Drexel, the three hooded lanterns are each able to kill one of one creature on the top level. So yeah. And I say spread out. Nice. Perfect. And I stay where I am. Okay. Actually, you know what? Is it, so we're in the hallway and it can go around, right? Correct. Pardon me. So the where we are is it? Um, oh, the the upper level connected. is exactly the like the hallway is the same on both floors, basically. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'll stay where I am for now. Okay. Uh, next up is uh, Sebastian and Makeda. Sebastian runs in. Am I able to see those guys over the? Um over the railing? Yes. All right. So I run in, and I'm just going to shoot a firebolt at the one that I see in front of me. Okay. Uh, 27. That is a hit. Fifteen damage. Uh, that's the same one that Veo had killed or hurt. Though it is wounded. resistant to the flames, it is enough to destroy it. Woo! Yeah. And then uh, does Makeda have a ranged attack? Or uh, Makeda does not have ranged attacks. How far can she go? She can fly 90 feet. She flies in and flies up to the last one. Okay, on the second level. And she easily dispatches it like it's not even there. Does its body quiver yeah. with fear? It, no, her her blessed blades just burn it away like it's not even there. Um, and as it um, as she comes into the room, Makeda speaks and says this vile creature is a gatekeeper a Sabirex don't listen to its vile intellect. It will deceive you and rack your mind. As she's saying that, Sebastian's peering over the ledge because he's never actually seen it with his own eyes. And he looks down upon the creature on the throne. And it's not good. He, he has a moment. <laughs> it's kind of scary. Mm -hmm. Oh, Big. man. Oh, 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 geez. 
Yep. Oh boy. Sabirex. Its voice echoes out in your minds, and you can hear its. It is almost like a symphony of screams with every word it speaks in your heads. And it says, I uh, open the way, cascading worlds in all realities. You shall be the markers that bring forth my masters. I didn't understand any of that. Like, and ow. he was welcoming um, welcoming us to Dragonheim, yeah, uh, Castle Dragon. If we not if we want anything, and it as it does so, it uses its first legendary action to cast Feeble Mind on Sebastian. Can I dispel it? <laughs> you want to try to counterspell it? Yeah, <laughs> you can try. Spell. Counter spell. <laughs> it's like everyone. We already have feeble minds. He's the strongest mind here. <laughs> okay. Uh, do I get bless on that? Uh, it is a. Uh, yeah, yeah. We'll say bless applies. And is it a saving throw? Uh, or no you're, counter you're spell. Counter spell. So you add your charisma mod plus your bless to try to counter spell it. You need to get an eighteen because it's an eighth level spell. My spell casting ability. Okay. Uh, that's gonna be twenty-eight. <laughs> nice. You Ooh. block the magic of the spell as it tries to pull apart uh, your mind and break your reality. Not today, demon. <laughs> and I, I block okay. it. It hurts a little. <laughs> <laughs> I see you struggling, yeah. and I'm like, what are you, what are you doing? It's getting into my brain. Oh, oh. Yeah. okay. <laughs> Claws at the back of my mind. Something like that. Um, It is Castle Dragon's turn. Oh, God. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Guys, it's not good in here. It's not cool. Okay. I'm worried. The... Roping tendrils and of flesh pull their way up from the ground and encircle around Sebastian and the hooded lanterns. <gasps> All of you need to make dexter uh, need uh, need to make strength saving throws. Oh, oh, the hooded lanterns. The hooded lanterns, Elias, everyone on the balcony, basically. Um, guys, why'd I go in first? <laughs> What are there? You got uh, this. They get a plus two. I'm being brave. So being one. Brave. I'm not brave. Fifteen for one of them. Ten for another. Twelve for another. Okay, they're all restrained. And Elias Drexel is also restrained. What'd you get? I'm restrained. You're restrained. Okay. And Makeda. Does a six win? Makeda is also restrained. Uh-oh. No, Makeda! Okay. It's not burn around. Uh, next up is Paluto Jackson um, and the Caspians. So, come on, boys. <laughs> Let's show them what's going on. I hope we don't die suddenly. Uh, good, good speech. <laughs> I run in. Mm-hmm. Caspians stay at... Uh, help your friends. What are they restrained by? They're restrained by the tendrils of flesh. Uh, I command them to start just chopping at the flesh. Okay, they do so. The um, I will roll for each of the Caspians yeah. to try to break out one of the, their respective hooded lanterns. None of them succeed, <laughs> but Jupiter Jones... Uh, and Jupiter Jones doesn't manage to break out Elias Drexel either. Oh my gosh, they're well, so strong. And do you manage to break out Sebastian Crow? Um, or are you doing something different? Mm-hmm. How far away is the big tentacle monster flesh mound thing? Well, from where you're standing on the balcony. Like if I come into the room. Door, door matches up. So, this is one, two, three, four, five, six. so you're about 
You're about 40 feet away. Um, do I go for it? It's your uh, turn, man. Misty step onto it. What? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you misty step right onto Above it. Above it, and I just start cutting into its fleshy okay. core and just start dr- I drive and I scream Ignatius and I scream Pluto bring the light to you um <laughs> luck point lucky uh oh. for a 20 to hit that is a hit oh nice uh, yeah. for uh 14 uh 23 damage and then I swing again uh, like a 25 to hit for uh, 16 damage and I swing again and I <laughs> miss completely okay so I'm just starting driving. you are on top of it stabbing down upon it <laughs> and it says no no stab the flesh comes back uh oh uh oh. Okay. Um, and the Caspians, they're just trying to free the friends. Okay. So it will use its legendary action um, now to squirt bile at you, Pluto. <laughs> Excuse Make a dexterity you. Dexterity saving throw. Excuse you. Ooh, which one? <laughs> I'm going to use um, Indomitable, and I get a uh, 15. That is a failure. Oh, You take 37 points of acid damage. Oh, the acid. It burns. (laughs) Um, And it will also spend a legendary action, because it also gets a chance to do so after the Caspian's turns as well, Um, and its turn is coming around. It will squirt bile at uh, Sebastian. Is, because of the angle, do I have cover? Uh, cover? You're restrained. So you... I'm going to say that cancels the disadvantage that you have on your saving throw. But no. Uh, so you make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> dodge it. Dodge it. I'm restrained <laughs> and I'm trying to like dodge. <laughs> 18. That is a failure. Oh, come on. <laughs> And you take 28 points of acid damage. As it just kind of horks this vile mixture of sizzling flesh. Oh, my face. And delirium sludge at you. (laughs) We come to its turn. We never have the goggles. And it says... I can't. (laughs) Your body. You... Ah, uh, all going to die. The magic that you think protects you will not do so here. And it casts Dispel Magic on your Hero's Feast. No! On everyone's? Uh, it has to target one person at a time with it. Uh, so it's going to ta- target uh, Pluto first with Dispel Magic. Okay. So I have to beat a 16 with my spellcasting ability check. Your Hero's Feast is gone. And I get a hit on it, right? Uh, yes, because it's casting Slayer? a spell. Bum, yeah. bum, bum, bum. But him. the uh, effects of your Hero's Feast are gone. You oh. lose, what was it, 12 hit points? You lose the, uh, yeah, you lose the 12 hit points, and you are no longer immune to poison, which is going to be very relevant. Mm-hmm. Oh, excuse Because you are you. now in its aura of contamination. Oh. <laughs> are we up on the balcony in its aura? Uh, no, the balcony is safe from the aura of contamination. Oh, good. I'm just going to um, hang out there. Oh, uh, it's only uh, s- 19 to hit. That is a hit. Oh, gosh. Uh, for... E- 12, 21 damage. Okay. And I drive Ignatius into it. Is it concentrating on any spells? Uh, it is not. Oh. It is not. Bummer. Uh, we go now to the top uh, of... Ah. Yes. 
We have one last <laughs> little surprise. Oh, it's right there. Veo, the door behind you opens up. Huh. No! What? And a massive minotaur <laughs> with a flaming sword steps out behind you, hauls the sword up and over, and brings it down upon you. It can certainly try. Go for it. Dodge. <laughs> Flame sword. He attacks you three times with his great sword. That's a lot. Getting a uh, 27, a 27, and a 18 to hit. Well, I'm gonna use my uncanny dodge on one of those. (laughs) Okay, to have the damage? To, let me just see. Uh, yes. Okay. So the first hit deals um, 20 points of slashing damage. So 10. i it on that one. And another 5 points of fire damage. Oh. So and the second hit does another 20 points of slashing damage plus 4 fire damage. And the last hit does... Ooh, ouch. Uh, does a total of 26 slashing damage and another 9 fire damage. Oh! <laughs> oh no. Cool. Veo, it is now your turn. <laughs> is it based with me? He is, he is you gonna, based you with you. right up to me? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I... For the sake of the battle cam, I might move this here, but yeah. it's on the floor above. Yeah, that's fine, because I'm outside the doors. Um, I... Oh! Yeah, you can get out of there. The massive form oh, of yeah. the mutated Leonard Von Kessel, standing almost 14 feet tall, clad in bursting plate armor and wielding a flaming sword of burnished iron as he crashes down behind you and brings his blade upon you. And you can see this crazed look in his eyes like his will is not his own. And I just say, listen, Leonard, I know we didn't get along as kids. We used to play tricks on each other a lot, but this is just, this is a bit much. And I cast Zephyr Strike, use my feline agility, and I boot it towards the stairs. Okay. And as I get there, I... Over here. (laughs) Okay. Um, I get there and... And you see in the stairs, you can hear the screeching of rats as a moving sea, as you look down the stairs upon a moving sea of rattlings. <sighs> are, are we, are we have our mental connection? Yep. Uh, guys, the rats came. Uh, and I take my long bow and I aim it at Leonard. Okay. And I am using my advantage on my Zephyr Strike to take a big ol' shot at him. Uh, t- 21 plus... 27 a hit. That is a hit. <gasps> okay. Forty-two damage. Wow. Okay. Eat it. Eat it. Eat all of it. Okay. And then I take uh, another shot at him with my longbow. Oh, nope. Natural one. Natural one. Fun. And are there rats up the stairs? No, they are. You can hear them. They're they're <laughs> probably on the base, coming up from the basement, basically. Okay. Um, how many feet do I have? Left? Five, ten. I'm gonna just get to like the top of the stairs where I can still see them, but I like I just want to like. Okay, so you're going up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, but like I still want to like keep an eye on him just so I'm not like getting blinded w- from where he's at. Okay. But like, kind of like half. 
Cool. The hooded lanterns are restrained, so each of them try to break out of their restraints. Uh, and all of them succeed. Woo! Uh, and so does Elias Drexel. They Them's break out of their restraints. That's my kin. Um, and we go to Sebastian. What does it take to break out of the restraints? You need to spend your action and make a strength check. <laughs> Or you can teleport or do something else. Oh. We're going to break out because I'm a strong boy. Oh. You're, You're pretty strong. strong. What you get? 18? You break out. Yeah. Strong boy! And uh, I turn and I come back to the door. And you see Leonard. <laughs> you see- and I see Leonard. And I'm like, stop messing with my friend. And I spray some web out of the web, out of the web, out of the, out of my staff, and just stick him right there between those two walls. Okay, he will need to roll a dexterity saving throw at the start of his turn. And the, I use because I use my action to break out. I'm going to quicken the web, the web spell. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what is Makeda? Do? Uh, Makeda is also restrained. So does she break out? Come on, Makeda. She does. She breaks out as well. And she soars back and just flies right at uh, Leonard. Okay. She flies back towards Leonard. And kind of just guards the door from him. Okay. Um, Cool. Uh, Are you on the balcony still yourself? Uh, Yeah, I'm right in the doorway behind... um, Behind Makeda. Cool. The um, the Sibirex is going to cast use its legendary action to cast Dispel Magic on you, Sebastian. Can it, can it see me? Um, let's find out. Because I am like in the doorway, so there's 5, 10, 15, 15 feet of balcony. I think it reaches up and can see it, over the balcony. It can see the balcony. Like, it can see everybody that's on the balcony from oh. where it is. Because it, it, do- it, 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 it reaches up, up the whole way. Like, it's, it is gigantic in its, in its size. Cool. Yeah. I love so, it. <laughs> cool, 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 cool. Uh, but it does not dispel your hero's feast. I shrug it away. Not now. Um, <laughs> I'm working now. on something. <laughs> okay. Listen, Leonard's just protecting his dad. Yeah, and I'm protecting you. You. Castle Draken um, uh, goes next and s- see- seems in reality no, no. crash open huh. and several more of these misshapen creatures spill out um, onto the balcony on the opposite side. On the opposite side of us? Yeah. The Sibirex, uh is going to then use its next legendary action to squirt bile at Pluto. Hey, excuse you. Make a dexterity saving throw. <laughs> so rude sometimes. Uh, 18? That is a fail. Oh. Saving throw. And that is going to be... Oh, oh my god. That is going to be 41 points of acid damage. Oh, it burns. Oh, no. <laughs> Pluto, it's your turn. It burns. I feel really alone and isolated right now. Where's so, your Caspians? Um, <laughs> yeah, are the Caspians coming down to help you? They'll just die from the fall. <laughs> imagine they just, I imagine they just fall off the, the bridge and just like land funny and just lay there. Wasn't it your choice to put them on the balcony, the close cut? Well, I mean, I'm not going to just go in. S- what are you going to do, Pluto? I'm going to uh, keep on swinging, baby. Alrighty. Uh, keep on swinging. Uh, like a 26. That is hit. a hit. That is a hit. And I drive Ignatius in for uh, 25 damage. Nice. All of it radiant. All of it just attacking. Um, oh, boy. Six. 20 to hit. That is a hit for... 22 damage. Nice. I had to precision strike that. And then we're gonna just drive. 
Last attack. Ah! Um, a 19 to hit. That is a hit. Or pardon, 20. Uh, for 8, 9, 10, 11, uh, 20 damage. Nice. And then I action surge, and I just came swinging! Get it! Ah, and I crit! Oh hey! my god! <laughs> and I just, uh, he just won't stop. He just keeps going. Um, so that's a 12, um, uh, 30, 40, 30, 45 damage. Yes. Amazing. And he just keeps swinging. And he's just, he's, he's like, stop attacking my friends. And 20. That is like also a hit. hit. Yep. For, uh, say, I'm getting tired of math. <laughs> 18 <laughs> damage. Okay. You're just cutting off swaths of this creature's flesh. Um, and it, it appears like it cannot feel the physical sensation of pain. Um, otherwise, it would probably be screaming. Or maybe it's just always in pain. 20 to hit. That is a hit for uh, 21 damage. Guys, nice. the helmet came off. <laughs> the <laughs> helmet came sweaty. off. And then uh, I'm going to bonus action um, heal a little bit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, for 19 health. Woo. Okay. I'm standing there. It will Just use try. its legendary action to <laughs> squirt bile at you again. Bring it on. I ain't scared. I'm a little scared. I'm actually, to be honest, guys, I'm I'm telepathically telling you I'm scared, but I tell him that I'm not scared. And we're <laughs> like uh, a four. saying nice words to you, like, Pluto, you could do it. You're Caspian. You kill monsters. This is one more thing to add to your list. You got this. Back. That is 39 points of acid damage. Ah, the f- the acid. Sebastian's freaking out on one side. His one friend's getting sprayed with acid. On the other side, there's a demon who is like tracking down his his cat friend. Cool. Man, man can only do so much. The Sibirex will then... Uh, do the Caspians do anything? The, the Caspians don't know what to do. They're up on the balcony and they... Um, uh, I, they charge. Yeah, they race across the balcony as fast as they can to engage the others. Is Jupiter capable of going down? Uh, yeah, and Jupiter's gonna leap down. Yeah, uh, my man. Jupiter Jones leaps down. <laughs> um, he he takes damage in the process. Um, so he takes twenty points of damage from jumping down <laughs> oh, and Jupiter. lands prone. But he's got enough movement to stand up, and he strikes at one of the creatures beside him <laughs> and kills it. That a boy. Um, and the Sabirex, um, the Sabirex, um, it's, it's turn now and it uses squirt bile on, it, it gets to make attacks with its bite and chains. And so it brings in its chains and, uh, chains against you, Pluto. Ah! Um, making three chain attacks against you. Excuse you. Getting a 22, a 25, and a 12 to hit. And I shield. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Blocking all, does that block all of them? I have 25. 25. Uh, it gets a 25 on one of the hits. Okay, so one gets through. One does get through. Okay. The one hit that gets through uh, deals 20 points of piercing Oh, damage. oh boy. <laughs> Oh, mercy. <laughs> and then it uses Squirt Bile against uh, Jupiter Jones, who fails the saving throw. And, ow. Uh, Jupiter Jones takes 35 points of, dam- of damage, and Jupiter Jones is bloodied oh, as well. Oh, no. Oh, and Jupiter. And then the demons swarm. Uh, then the demons on the lower level, uh, three of them rush over to you, Pluto. Oh. And the remainder rush to surround Jupiter Jones. Die. Uh, none of them get through your shield. Thank goodness. Um, but Jupiter Jones does take 10 points of damage from their attacks. Uh, Jupiter Jones is bloodied. Is the monster bloodied? Uh, it. Can I tell? It 
the 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 fleshy demon. It is bloodied. Yeah. Woo. Uh, then we go to Leonard, who is in the web. He makes a saving throw against the web. Uh, he gets a eighteen. No. <laughs> okay. He comes no. uh, charging through the webs. <laughs> Uh, is that Sebastian right in front of him? No, that's uh, Makeda. Are you on the balcony? I'm. I'm. One, I'm five feet behind Makeda. Okay, he comes right towards you because you're the one that webbed him through Makeda. Uh, yes, he barges right past Makeda, and he has ten feet reach. So if he's up b- b- with Makeda, he can get to you. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Makes three attacks, uh, getting a thirty, a twenty-three. And a 13. Two of them hit. Okay. And not even a shield <laughs> will save me. Uh, the first hit does 22 slashing damage. Cool. And uh, nine fire. Oh. And the second hit does 17 slashing and seven fire. Oh. I'm bloodied. I'm bleeding. Yeah, I'm, I'm bleeding, bleeding hard. Good. I'm bleeding yeah. pretty good. And Leonard's going to come into the vestibule enough so that he uh, uh, he seems to have a keen tactical mind. He's taking cover so that he there's no like he moves in as best he can. Actually, like, he's going to plow right past. Um, does he get an opportunity attack, attack from, from Makeda? Makeda? Yeah, he, but he doesn't care. He takes it. Makeda hits him. She swipes at him, but yeah, he's just going to ru- tra- trample right through onto the balcony. So he's now based with uh, three hooded lanterns and Elias Draxel. Yeah. And he takes 25 points of damage as Makeda slashes at him. Good job, Makeda. Nice. Yeah, so nice. To the top with Veo. All right. Um, so he's gone back in, and I can't see him anymore, right? Correct. Uh, so I'm going to... And the um, rats are running up the stairs. I'm going to use my bonus action to dash, using my cutting action. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to get uh, 60 feet. And that door that's on this building is, is not on the... on the no, Does not exist not on the upper, upper level. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, you don't have eyes on anything, right? Um, so I'm gonna pop a superior healing potion. Okay. Cool. Forty, right? Yep. Okay. What I'm are the hooded lanterns from. gonna do? Uh, they are going to attack um the prince. The prince. They take out their swords and attack Leonard. Uh, one hits. Two hit and one crits. Woohoo! Yeah. Uh, so I'm cheering them on. Le- they slash into Leonard and encircle him. Leonard takes 20 points of damage total from the attacks, uh, actually leaving Leonard bloodied. And what about Elias? Uh, Elias, he's uh, like he's it's, right here. Uh, he's going to go in on Leonard as well. Go for it, Elias. He lands one solid hit and deals mm. another 15 points of damage. Yeah. To Leonard. Um, now, um, the Sibirex is going to use its legendary action to squirt bile at Pluto. No! <laughs> You're just getting biled all over. I've, that poor armor. I, I've, I've taken so much bile damage. Oh, that sounded like a lot. Um. I got a 13. That is a failure. That is going to be another 33 points of acid damage. So I'm going to use absorb elements. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> that would kill me. Okay. So that's your reaction. And okay. only 17 damage. Okay. Maybe. Yep. So it's okay. half that. Six. Yeah. Oh 17. my gosh. That's a lot of damage. Okay. Um, yeah. So you have resistance to acid damage at the start of your next turn. That's key. Sebastian, it is your turn. <laughs> okay. 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 Um 
Okay. Okay. I uh, Sebastian. Sp- oh, and I guess I should say I totally forgot the the one the monsters on the on the top level would have charged the Caspians, and actually one of the Caspians is killed and eaten. Oh. oh. Poof. <laughs> um. Yeah. I need I need everybody to save me from Leonard because I'm I'm gonna try to save. What are you doing? Uh, so I skirt around Leonard. Okay. To the edge of the balcony. Okay. Where I can see Pluto <laughs> and Jupiter, and they both are getting ripped apart by demons. Yes. True. And I pull out my staff and point it down, and I'm going to twin polymorph, <laughs> turning both of them into T Rexes. Nice. I only have one T-Rex miniature. Oh! Um... Should keep you alive. Game changer. (laughs) Someone can use this as their T-Rex form. It's a Hydra. Yeah! Oh no. Cool. All right. I suddenly feel so strong. Uh, leaving me vulnerable to Leonard, but Alrighty. hopefully saving my friends. All right. If I can keep concentration on it. Cool. The Sabirex is going to use its legendary action uh, to... Has dispel magic on Pluto. Does I'm going to counterspell that. <laughs> does it do it verbally? It does not. It, it, it the, the Sibirix, It's an eight. It, it does do it verbally. Yeah, it does speak the spell. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It it doesn't need it's super. Why well, it doesn't need material components? Yeah, it, there's no material. It's innate spell casting. Why do you ask? No reason. Okay. Uh, so can I counterspell it? Yes, you can. Oh, you're not getting rid of my T Rexes. <laughs> not that easily. <laughs> okay, it's Makeda's turn. Uh, Makeda is just gonna lay into uh, to Leonard with with everything, whatever her best moves are. Cool. She attacks twice. Unfortunately, misses both times. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't cool at all. That wasn't great. That's not what I she wanted. Got a natural one. <gasps> well, Makeda. Why do you have to roll so good for the bad guys, Monty? Well, you know, the dice giveth and the dice taketh away. Yeah, they just took my life, man. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Uh, Castle Draken sends a, a pulse radiates through all the delirium, and Castle Draken casts heal on the Severex. No! Restoring 70 hit points to it. It is no longer bloody. Pluto, it is your turn. You're a T-Rex. I just start thrashing at the Sabirix, I guess. Uh, um, Are you getting, biting or tailing? Uh, biting for uh, 28 and then tailing. You can, oh, I can't you, make this. Yeah, you can tail so one I, of the little demons. I bite it and then I'm going to tail one of the things behind me. <laughs> okay. The bite hits. Oh. I'm going to negate all that healing. Uh, yeah. Uh, forty-five damage. Oh my god! Okay, S- suck on that delirium crystals. Um, is it medium? <laughs> no, it's not medium. <laughs> okay, it's huge. And then I get a twenty-three to hit the thing behind me. Um, <laughs> which just splatters it all over I the just place. Launch yeah. it. Yeah, it just it gets launched. Uh, <laughs> Jupiter Jones, I gotta say, probably <laughs> destroys two of the things surrounding him. Uh, the Caspians, dis- uh, the two Caspians, destroy two of the demons. And the Severe expends its legendary action to cast Feeble Mind on Sebastian. A counterspell. You can't. You just counterspelled this dispel magic. Oh, that's on the same turn. It's still the same turn. Yeah, it is. Oh man. Okay. Uh, uh, what do I need to do? Well, first of all, uh, you take uh, 
18 psychic damage right away, and you need to make an intelligent saving throw. Use uh, everything. You also have... Um, bless. bless. Yeah. I, I got it. I got it. Oh, no. What did you get? Nine. Your intellect and personality are shattered. <laughs> oh, no. Your intelligence and charisma become one. You can't cast spells, activate magic items, understand languages, or communicate in any tel- intelligible way. You can recognize your friends and even protect them. At the end of every 30 days, you can repeat the saving throw. If it succeeds on your saving throw, the spell ends. You can also It can also be ended by greater restoration, heal, or wish. Lucretia! <laughs> Lucretia! <laughs> Lucretia, we need you right now. Does this So, do- I guess I lose concentration on the T-Rexes. Uh, uh, technically, you can still concentrate on the spell. All right, good. <laughs> I was going to say, it didn't hit you. <laughs> I Basically, you just see me get like blasted in the mind, and I'm just standing there being like, T-Rex. You do need to make a concentration check, though, T-Rex. because you did take 18 psychic damage. Can we uh, T-Rex. communicate telepathically to Lucretia? T-Rex. Yes. We need her to come and cast Greater Restoration on... Um, Sebastian. I'm doing a concentration she, check, right? Is the battle still raging? Yes. We are trapped and surrounded by rattlings down here. Yeah. That's probably not good, right? No, it's not. Oh, boy. <gasps> Another double crit! I, I make my concentration check. Okay. Oh. Double crits all the way across the sky. <laughs> uh, I, this, yeah, yeah. This is, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> what what is it that that does it? It's greater restoration or heal or, or wish. wish or wish. All right. Okay. Uh, the Sibirex. It's its turn, and it is going to um, cast. Uh, it's going to use its action to cast Dispel Magic on Paluto. Stop it! Uh, the uh, Polymorph is dispelled. Oh, no! <laughs> oh, no. Uh-oh. So I'm a, I'm a regular dude again. Yep. Uh, the demons attack you. Uh, none of them hit, though. The other demons attack Jupiter. One of them hits him for 10 damage, but he's a T-Rex. Uh, the demons on the balcony attack the Caspians. Oh, shit. Uh, and one of the Caspians is killed. Um, and the... Uh, oh. Uh, and Leonard, uh, he carves a swinging attack on Elias Drexel, Makeda, and Sebastian. Oh, no. Uh, he hits Elias Drexel, he hits Makeda, and he hit. He gets a 25 against Sebastian. <laughs> uh, Elias Drexel and Makeda both take 25 points of damage, and so does Sebastian. No, Sebastian! And I need a concentration check from you, Sebastian. I also need to use that uh, that that ability that I have that I'm looking for right now. Ah, yes. Strength of the grave. A charisma saving throw. What's the DC? Uh, five plus the damage taken. Okay, so it's DC thirty. Yep. And your charisma modifier is now minus five. I thought it just affected my intelligence. Your, your charisma is one. And and my intelligence? Okay. So I'll put that away. And <laughs> so I I'm... guess you... Yeah, so you go down. <laughs> no! I thought it was just my intelligence. Lucretia. Oh, <laughs> Lucretia. Hmm. Okay. Okay. We go to the top of the round with Veo. Wait, um, after Sebastian, I haven't... No, I went. Yeah, you went. You attacked as yeah. a T-Rex. I did, didn't I? Yeah. 
I did my stuff. Um. I. You can do it. You can do it, Veil. I guess uh, Jupiter's. Yep, Jupiter's form is returned. Sorry, Pluto. <laughs> you tried. We all tried. We all tried our darndest. I get up to Sebastian using my bonus action as a dash. I give him a superior healing potion. As you rush up to Sebastian, Makeda says, No, do not. He is lost. Destroy the beast. Okay. I do not give him a healing potion, (laughs) and I turn and I fire two shots using my longbow. Um, I I whimper, Makeda, why? (laughs) I don't know. Kill it with the, uh, use your, uh, use everything. Who are you shooting? Uh, Leonard. Okay. And I missed my first one. And that was cocked. You also have Bless. Uh, 16. Got your third shot, crossbow expert. I used my longbow because I used my bonus action to get over there for a dash. Um, And I ready myself to to take some shots. (laughs) All right. The hooded lanterns uh, attack. Leonard. Leonard. Go for it. Seeing their commander fallen, the three of uh, Elias Drexel and the hooded lanterns attack. Wow. Uh, Elias Drexel leaps up onto Leonard's back and says, I thought I was done killing Von Kessels. Oh! And beheads <laughs> Leonard Von Kessel. Yes! And I look at him with just like the most gratitude I've ever looked at someone with. And I'm like, thank you. Uh, Sebastian. Uh, um, and uh, the... Sibirex uses its legendary action to squirt bile at Veo. Or heal Sebastian. <laughs> <laughs> One or the other. Like, whatever whatever you're feeling. Is it Dex? Yeah. <laughs> uh, 23. You succeed. And so I take no damage. You take no damage. Evasion. <laughs> Sebastian, death saving throw, buddy. Pluto... Do I get bless on my uh, death saving throw? Yeah, technically. Yeah. Uh, that's a 20. That's a crit. You get back up. You get yes! up! I climb Sorry. to my feet. <laughs> my, you, the love of Pluto. <laughs> I'm gritting my teeth and I'm like, I will not let my friends die today. Is and your intelligence high enough where you can make words? No. <laughs> you can I, see- I climb to my feet and I point at Pluto and I go, friend! <laughs> and Makeda places her hand on your head because Makeda as an angel can cast greater restoration oh, <laughs> oh. oh I feel oh. 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 your oh. mind is cleared I'm like oh so that's why you didn't want Wait. me to oh, cuckoo, cuckoo. do I get up with like one hit point uh, yeah you have one hit point the Sibirix is going to squirt bile at Pluto <laughs> I thought you were going to say Sebastian <laughs> that's all I need all I need is one hit point uh, this is probably going to kill me, boys. Oh! No, it's not. I use lucky and I get a six. <laughs> is that all your luckies? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Four. Thirty. So, yeah, that's going to be 38. Oh! That's a damage. <laughs> uh, and I'm covered in... Wait, is this st- still... No, because I already used my reaction. Yeah, I'm, I'm covered in bile. Okay, you've fallen... Are you zero? Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, Castle Draken uh, conjures forth more fiends. It is going to summon forth three more fiends. They all appear on the summoning circle. Pluto, uh, death saving throw there, buddy. Okay. Get there, Pluto. I Come on. I believe in it. I believe in it. Uh, yeah, I got like a 16. Okay. Jupiter Jones uh, 
The remaining Caspian cuts down one of the fiends. Jupiter Jones, he manages to kill... Uh, actually, none of them. <laughs> no, Jupiter! <laughs> Swinging in a miss. But he, he races towards Pluto to try to kill the ones around him. He's like, back, fiends! Thanks. Oh, Jupiter loves me. Uh, cool. Uh, and the... Um, the Sibirex, um, it uh, is going to uh, attack Jupiter Jones with its chains, scoring three hits, oh. dealing 60 damage to Ju- Jupiter Jones, and Jupiter Jones is ripped limb from limb and devoured <gasps> by the Sibirex. No! Jupiter! <sighs> oh, no. I mean, he volunteered. <laughs> <laughs> and the Sibirax cackles. Your friend is next. I probably am. Leonard is destroyed. <laughs> Veo, it is over to you. Um, I don't want it causing any more things. Um, you say it verbally cast spells, correct? Yes. All right, I cast silence on it. I'm like, I've had enough of you. <sighs> Shh. <laughs> and as a bonus. Yeah, you have to choose a, a point. You have to choose an object. So you yeah. can choose the throne. Sure. Okay. It's like a tw- yeah. yeah, 20 feet. So it's all silent around it. Um, I use my cunning action to hide behind the doors. Okay. What about the hooded lanterns? And they are going to take shots at the... Sibrex? Sibrex. Okay. The hooded lanterns, all three of them are still alive, right? Yes. All four of them. Tech, well, three plus lies. Yeah. So they fire shots at the Sibirex. Uh One of them scores a critical hit. Yeah. But the other three don't get their shots in. Elias Drexel, he doesn't get his shots in. But the one that crit does 15 damage to the Sibirix. And the Sibirix responds by using its legendary action to cast Warp Creature on the Hooded Lanterns. Is it verbal? It is not. It is a special power of its. They all have to make constitution saving throws, which all of them fail. (laughs) And they are poisoned and they gain one level of exhaustion and they begin mutating horrifically. Are they... They have resistance to poison. Oh yeah, they're they heroes do. feast. <gasps> they're they're immune to it. They're so immune, yeah, sorry. so they don't warp, but they do get and they don't gain one level of, exa- of exhaustion. Oh well. Severix thought it was Bam. so smart. Forgot about that whole So it's like I can't talk, but I can't Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> My learners be tough. Oh, that's two of its legendary actions too. Darn. Good. Okay. Uh Sebastian, it is your turn. Do I still have fly on me? You no, because you guys took a short rest. True. None of you have any flight in effect. I mean, if you want a potion, that, that I I have to use literally all of my move bonus action and action to do what I want to do. What do you want to do? I wanted to reach Pluto, and then can, thunder step out. Can Makeda fly you over? Can I use Makeda's action to fly me like fly and drop me onto Pluto? <laughs> You would have to ready your action to cast the spell. She could pick you up and fly you over there. Do it. I was going to use... Okay. My my readied action is going to be a quick... Can I quicken the thunder step, though? No. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what do you... Like, I my, my original hope was to fly over, quicken thunder step so that I could get out of there and then feed him a potion with yeah, my action. Yeah, if you... Take your potion of flying yeah. and drink it. You could fly over to him and then thunder step back. But I but couldn't not heal feed him. him. A potion. No. Okay. Um, do you want to get down there? Yes. I have Featherfall if you need it. And you can do that as a reaction? Yeah. Can I like make eye contact with Veo, who's like, right here? If you make eye contact and like fall, I'm going to be like, ah! Another pigeon feather. Can she feather fall me down? Sure. Okay. Yeah, do you have enough so, speed to get over to, 
to so him. So, like, does falling count? Like, if I no. fall, I'm gonna land here. Yep. Yes. <laughs> oh. Okay. I, Epic. I, Feather fall. I just, I turn around. I look at Veo. I kind of like give her a little salute, and I just jump off the balcony. And out comes a pigeon feather. And I, with one hit point, Sebastian <laughs> la- like floats down, <laughs> jumps, grabs Pluto, thunder steps using a quicken spell, brings him back just outside the room. And I feed him a... And what level are you going to cast the Thunderstep at? (laughs) Let's do it as a fourth level spell. Okay. And and then I feed him a superior healing potion. All right. I get a 16 on my constitution saving throw for the Sabirex. That is a fail. Um... What's up? <laughs> um, how do you uh, <laughs> how do you cast Thunderstep? Do you use vocal or oh, in the area of silence? Yeah, but if it's on the throne, um, the the throne is, is it, is, is it far enough? Is it far 5, enough? 10, 15, 20. So he was laying right outside. Of yeah, it. yeah. Okay. okay, okay. That's okay. We're gonna go roll with it. Okay. So and all the little minions that are We're around. Fine. Oh, oh. Yeah. yeah, cause you cast yep. Yeah. That's clutch. Twenty one damage to everything in uh what area? Okay. Yeah. So like I think it's only the the two minions and the Cybrax that are hit with that. Are the minions? The minions destroyed? are completely annihilated by it. Pew. Yeah. And he gets blown up. I feed you a superior healing potion. I'm still at one hit point, (laughs) but you're good. And that's what really matters. Okay. Pluto, it's your turn. We have to kill this thing. We're getting there. Yeah, I know. I just just need you to not die. Oh, sorry. Uh, Makeda touches Pluto and heals him for 20 hit points. (gasps) And then it's Pluto's turn. I run back. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I cradle you in my arms I feed you a potion Your eyes open And you just run I get up And I just start Booking it it's At like this a, monster So like, do you like jump Like adrenaline You're like Ooh, Okay make okay. an athletics check do you jump? <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you You can teleport Why don't you I can't teleport you, Not you anymore No he oh, only okay. used one He only oh. had one missy step uh, No I his get cape a, uh, He uses his cape uh, uh, It's an action uh, in the area Oh uh, true not Is bus still in effect Yeah uh, I get a 16. You leap across towards the Sibirex. And I drive Ignatius <laughs> back into okay. it. I will give you advantage on the attack roll. Sebastian Because of the uh, flying roll. leap. He's done enough. So I'm... <laughs> I, I'm sorry, Sebastian. I saved you. you. Your life is yours to do with what you want. I'm, I can... Uh, whatever. Uh, Bye, Pluto. I get a... Uh, like a 29 to hit for... 40, 23 damage. <laughs> the blade comes in the middle of the Sabirex and it tears down the front of it and there's this oh. ripping noise and then this blubber and this explosion of bile. Pluto and everyone, everybody in the room that is within 60 feet of the Sabirex uh, uh, needs to make a dexterity saving throw. If I'm literally out in the hallway slumped in a corner dying, am I okay? I am also out in the hallway. <laughs> you can have advantage... Uh, like, where, did you go that far out? How yeah. did you get there? Is I, that where you teleported? I to? teleported through the door here, oh, okay, and okay. then I, after I fed him a potion, I like moved. Okay. And, like, oh, collapsed. so you're still on the bottom floor. You didn't even have to jump. No, I, I. I oh, yeah, you're out there. Yeah. So you're with me. Yeah. Oh. So I was just like, I saw the whole thing. Uh, I was I, like, what? I, because you need line of sight to where you teleport to, and you use all your movement to get to him. You technically before. are out. So you have advantage on your saving throw. Okay. But I'm outside behind the door. Yeah. I just see a wave of bile. <laughs> like, we're, we're technically all yeah. next to each other. Mm. Yeah. Up here. Yeah. Oh, yeah, but you can't see that area, can you? You have to be out Just the roll hall. the saving throw. Okay. Roll to save. What did you get? Blue. Oh. What saving throw was it? It's a... Dexterity. Do I have to roll it? No. Kidding. You're out of it. 
11. That's a failure. <laughs> 24. That's a failure. That's what did you get? 24. You succeed. So, Pluto, you're, you're right going to take... How would you avoid that? Uh, you're gonna take 30 points of acid damage. You're still alive. <laughs> still so much friggin' acid coming at me. Um, Did I? If I succeed, do I not take, take no damage? Oh, good. Uh, the hooded lanterns. Uh, two of the hooded lanterns are killed, as is the final Caspian. And that is where we're going to end for tonight. Uh, oh, I didn't even notice it was. What time it was? We ran a little past. We ran a little over. Thank you all. Uh, Severex is destroyed. Sebastian's Burst of necrotic and acidic energy point. floods the chamber as it wails out in pain and collapses in a heap of putrefying flesh. Guys, do I hear rats? Yes, you do. Yeah, by the way. Uh, I, take off, I uh, take off my helmet for... For Jupiter. I slump over the balcony and I also go, oh, <laughs> and oh I walk, man. And I walk out all clean and I say, oh, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> oh, where's Jupiter? <laughs> where, where are the Caspians? Oh, yeah. Where are the hooded lanterns? My lanterns! And I go and cradle their faces that are disintegrating. Where I'm is everybody? Where? Where's my arm? Oh, wait, it's still there. You made it. I barely. I don't feel so good. <laughs> Pluto, you're alive. And then I collapse. Thanks. Thanks. Big thank you, as always, to our cast, Kelly, Jill, and Joe for playing. And a huge thank you to Kyle for all of his wonderful work behind the scenes, making all this magic Woo! real. Um, as always, a uh, big shout out to Tabletop Audio. I thought I, I hope this battle was epic and I hope the music uh, connected. It's all free and it's all there for you. Tabletopaudio.com. Check it out. It's free and we love it. Of course, don't forget to take a look at the links below for our Teespring store. We can see some of our favorite Dungeon Dudes t-shirts like Yes, Yes, Yes uh, with all those rattlings coming up. Uh, you don't want to miss out on that. Uh, you can also check out bit.ly slash Dungeon Dudes merch. And I believe Kelly and I post new videos every Thursday on our YouTube channel where we cover everything Dungeons and Dragons, including advice for dungeon masters and guides for players. If you are enjoying the stream and want to help support our work as well, you can check out our Patreon, which you can find at patreon.com slash dungeon underscore dudes. We also have a phenomenal Discord community, so please, if you are a patron, join us on there. You can chat with us about all the things going on in this campaign, about the epic conclusion that is coming, and uh, just about all things D&D and nerdy. So join us on Discord. Be sure to join us live next week. Tuesday when we record the campaign live on Twitch. That will be December 17th, which will be our last live stream for 2019. We will be returning January in January after a bit of a break. That will be on this January 14th, 2020, when we come back boop, 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 boop. with more of the story, but maybe something a little bit new as well. Season two. <laughs> Be sure to join us live next Tuesday when we record the final episode of this season of this campaign live on Twitch. Check us out at 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern time at twitch.tv slash dungeon underscore dudes. You can also watch the video episodes of the show on YouTube. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time in the Dungeons of Drakenheim.